I saw this tweet earlier. People were saying that Yemen basically declared war on Israel. Well, it's the Houthi militia that has claiming they've launched attacks on Israel. They're Irani, uh, Iranian backed. And so there is concern that the war is beginning to escalate. However, calm down there, my friends, because it seems like the Ukraine war is over. And so while all war is bad, it is like it's kind of good news that Zelensky is losing. Time Ma magazine has published their front page story. Mm. Zelensky is desperate to win. But his advisors saying they've lost the war. Russia is winning. They're losing the war, I should say, to, to, be, to be clear. And there's little interest in the U.S. to continue funding what is already lost. It, as we've, we said this some time ago, it looks like Russia's won this one. In the meantime, however, it looks like things are escalating over Israel. We've got other breaking news that Israel has now taken, uh, had, has admitted to bombing a refugee camp, killing at least 50 civilians. And uh, uh, apparently they went on CNN and they said they did it. So things are getting absolutely horrifying right now. And as this escalates, there's concern with other nations saying that if Israel keeps keeps up these bombing campaigns, which kill civilians, then it's going to escalate further. Hopefully, as we see Ukraine wind down, the things that are escalating in the, in, in the Middle East do not become a World War Three scenario or go beyond the region. We're all hoping for that. We'll talk about that. Before we get started, head over to castbrew.com for the best cup of coffee you've ever had. Go to castbrew and buy our limited edition. It's Halloween, ladies and gentlemen. It is it is Halloween. And if you have not picked up our re-rise with Roberto Jr. special zombie blend, you're missing out. We are mocking our own dead mascot, Roberto Jr. And it's kind of sad, but, you know, we love him. So we, we gave him, not only does he have Rise with Roberto Jr., rest in peace, he has a zombie edition, which is a, a different blend. And then we have Appalachian Nights. That's my favorite. Rise with Roberto Jr. is everyone else's favorite. But uh, buy your Casper coffee. It supports the show. And I'll tell you this right now. We're building a coffee shop. It is taking a million years to get done. Permitting and government Re remodeling we've got to like now we've got to you know like fix supports and stuff but it is happening and i will tell you this these locations that we're looking to build for physical hangouts we are able to do it because you buy casper coffee so when we're looking at buying new materials and doing the construction that money is coming from the sales of casper so if you want to support that mission mm -hmm. go to casper but also go to timcast.com click join us to support our work directly if you like what we do and you'll get access to our uncensored members only shows we put those up monday through thursday at 10 p.m we will have one of those for you tonight where you as members can actually call into the show and talk to us and our guests so smash that like button subscribe to this channel share the show with your friends joining us tonight to talk to us about all of this is dr michael rechtenwald hi there tim how you doing how you uh good thanks for thanks for coming i'm uh, glad to be here thanks for having me who are you what do you do i'm the former nyu professor who took on the woke mob for free speech I am a former Marxist turned radical libertarian. Wow. And I am the author of uh, 12 books, uh, including Springtime for Snowflakes, Thought Criminal, and The Great Reset and the Struggle for Liberty. And speaking of liberty, I'm running for president as a libertarian. Well, all right. Well, thanks for hanging out. This should be yep. very interesting. Okay. Yep. We got Brett hanging out. What is going on, guys? Yes, I am Brett Dasovic, the host of Pop Culture Crisis. And speaking of Roberto Jr., we have a brand new Crisis Party sound effect. See, every time we get a certain amount of Super Chats, a new Crisis Party sound goes off. And now we have a remix with Roberto Jr., only it's done by Ian screaming really, really loudly doing his <laughs> Roberto Jr. impression, him and Phil together. So it's good. Hello, everybody. I am uh, Phil Labonte, lead singer of All That Remains. Very failed musician, anti-communist, and counter-revolutionary. And I'm here with my man. Surge.com, indeed. Uh, I'm ready when you are, Tim. Let's get ready. Here's a story from the New York Times. Yemen's Houthi militia claims to have launched an, uh, launched an attack on Israel. The Israeli military said it had thwarted a batch of aerial threats, but did not say who was behind them. Yemen's Houthi militia claimed an attempted attack on southern Israel in, uh, on Tuesday, saying it had launched a large batch of ballistic and cruise missiles, as well as drones, toward Israeli targets. The Iran-backed militia carried out the attempted assault in response to what it called brutal Israeli-American aggression in Gaza. The military spokesman, spokesperson, uh, spokesman Yahya Saraya said on the social media platform X, Mr. Saraya said the attack was the third operation conducted by the Houthis in support of our per persecuted brothers in Palestine and threatened further missile and drone assaults. The Times could not independently verify the claims. On Tuesday, the Israeli, Israeli military said it, it, its aerial defense system had intercepted a surface-to-surface -surface missile fired towards Israel from the area of the Red Sea. It said it has also intercepted other aerial threats in the area, none of which entered Israeli territory. Now, now here's, here's the big concern, I suppose. 
if you're looking at this through the lens of uh, the Ben Shapiro perspective, his view is that if the U.S. does not get involved and stamp out aggression toward or assist in the stamping out of aggression towards Israel, we are going to see an escalation of these kinds of assaults, which results in Israel taking the nuclear option, perhaps quite literally resulting in a World War Three scenario when uh, basically the idea is there's two ideas. One, in response to a serious military threat that, that could end Israel, Israel says, fire everything we've got. The second scenario, similar is Israel facing its demise, says we're going to fire everything everywhere and we're going to force the intervention of other countries to stop this conflict. Yeah, I mean, it's the exact inverse of what Shapiro is saying. The more we do, the more we intervene, the more the greater the threat of this turning into a, a wider uh, conflict, more countries that will get and drawn in. You know, you have, uh, of course, everything points back to Iran here, supposedly with Hezbollah and now the Houthis. And so we're looking at the possibility of drawing other uh, actors into this. And the United States is seemingly itching to attack Iran. And that's that's a problem. So, you know, the arming and funding of Israel is outrageous. This is drawing all these actors out. So we're actually, our interventions are causing this, uh, this conflict to escalate. So the, the uh, I guess my question is, if the U.S. does nothing, do you think these other countries, these Ar 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 Iranian-backed militias in Iran, do you think they just ignore Israel? Or do you think they attack Israel? I mean, if the U.S. does nothing but fund them to the tune of $3.8 billion a year, and now another $14 billion, uh, then of course there's going to be our involvement. We're already implicated in the whole in the whole conflict because of the uh, arms and funding we've been giving them over all this time. So yeah, we need to re retrench. We need to pull back all of our funding. And yeah, we would see that if we didn't intervene in all these conflicts, there would be less conflict in the world and especially you, the Middle East. Do you think that if the United States were not giving uh, funding? giving weapons and essentially essentially it's probably just giving weapons that the u.s pays uh weapon manufacturers for but if the mm -hmm. u.s were not and the israelis were just buying weapons from u.s manufacturers do you think that the the houthis in iran would look at it any differently because in my opinion i don't think that the people the countries and and states that don't like israel would see a distinction mm -hmm. even if we weren't giving it away if we were like look u.s firms are allowed to sell you like raytheon mm -hmm. and boeing can sell you weapons but we're not paying for it i don't really strongly believe that the the iranians are going to consider that a, a, a they'll call it a difference without a distinction well know? i don't know we, we, we're giving them the money and then they yeah. buy the arms that's how it works 3.8 billion a year so i think that you know if if in, i don't think first of all israel would be able to afford as much arms if it weren't for these outlandish uh grants every year and uh then add 14 billion on top of it and you've got the united states totally implicated so yeah i mean i don't see how uh that helps anything at all and so, yeah, if they were just buying their arms and, and largely from the United States, perhaps those countries would still consider the U.S. implicated. But th there's no doubt that our, you know, that we're fully involved in this because of that. And right now, U.S. rockets and bombs are falling on children in Palestine. This is an outrage. And this is, should be something that we completely oppose. Uh, it has no we have no business doing this. And it's I think it's blood on our hands, frankly. Yeah, I agree. The U.S. shouldn't fund it. But I, I just am not I'm not convinced that other countries would see a distinction. This, I think let's that, try I think it for just, once. We I haven't love it. I'm we haven't tried this ever. You know, so <laughs> why, why don't we give it a try? 100 percent. 100 percent. I'm not I'm not trying to push back against the I, idea. Actually, yeah. I think we tried it during the uh, the Barbary Wars. The U.S. <laughs> the U.S. was kind of like, "Hey, can we not go to war with you guys? Like, what's going on?" And then they were like, "Nah, we're we're gonna keep stealing." Food and burning <laughs> there was no down. Israel back then, but yeah. No, but yeah, my they, point is like, it was only the founding fathers who were like, "The United States will not be involved in these foreign conflicts." And then you get to uh, you know late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, and the politicians then are like, "I think the U.S. should be involved in foreign affairs and just start setting up military conquests. Why not?" And there you have it. And now we have eight hundred bases around the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one in Israel, by the way. Apparently, there's a secret base in Israel right now. It's called 152. It's this very, uh, you know, nondescript name. And we're actually, we have forces located in there. They're saying it's just 
uh, living accommodations, but it, it has uh, U.S. forces in it. Uh, this has been revealed. So site five one two is that yes, it is? that's it. Yeah. So we have, this is a, this is the intercept. Right. U.S. quietly expands secret military base in Israel. Government documents point to construction at a classified U.S. base offer rare hints about little noted U.S. military presence near Gaza. And there was there was some reporting. Hard to know what's true, claiming that U.S. forces were actually in Gaza during the invasion and may be there now. And uh, perhaps it's very hard to tell. I mean, all this is kept secret. These 2000 troops that were sent over they're they're sent to an undisclosed location. We don't know where they are. The Defense Department will not say where they are. So, I mean, for for certain military reasons, that makes sense. But we we still don't know. They may be in Israel. What what tro- I'm not familiar with the with the the troop de- deployment. I mean, I know that there's two Marine Expeditionary units that are with two mm-hmm. carrier groups, but I don't know about. Yeah, there's uh, two thousand troops that have been sent over. Two thousand, inf- you know, I don't know if they're in- infantry or Marines or what- whatever they are. They're there. And in the region, but they won't tell us where they are in the region. I bet they're in Iraq. Northern and then, Iraq, of course, we have two aircraft carriers in the uh, in the Mediterranean, and uh, you know we have uh, tons of arms just loaded around. So I think they're trying to bait the U.S. into a conflict. If something gets struck, we're going to go in. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, now with the U.S. hostages. You ha- do you have the <laughs> argument that oh the reason we have Delta forces on the ground yeah. is because of the hostages the the yeah. presence of twenty five hundred U S troops in Iraq and another nine hundred in eastern Syria both on missions against the Islamic State this is uh, I'm not looking great. Trump tried bringing them back yeah but don't you think that um are what are, your, what are your thoughts on this I mean a lot of people say that uh, if the U S is not if the U S just retracts everything mm-hmm. China just sweeps in I don't agree I mean I, they they moved into uh, Afghanistan. Well, then, I mean, the, you know, the thing is, we're in terms of China, what we're doing is provoking them as well, because we're talking about now sending uh, military aid to Taiwan. This is an utter provocation. So we're drawing China into conflict, seemingly on purpose. And I don't think China is going to try to uh, take, first of all, they don't have the military power to do it. They do not have the military power to take over the United States or invade us or anything like that. No, but I mean, they'll start... They'll they'll grow that power. They'll move into Central America. There's already concerns they they're going to try and make a move. They were trying to build the Nicaraguan Canal to gain control or or at least compete mm-hmm. with the Panama Canal. People were uh, there's a rumor about their them trying to gain control of the Panama Canal. Mm-hmm. They'll uh, they're going to move. They're already moving into Africa and South America. Yeah, I mean, I mean this, these are not military conquests though. And no, it's more like you know the West uses the IMF. It's the Belt and Road Initiative, and uh, this is how they're growing their soft power. And, you know, frankly, we should open up trade with China. We we are now embargoing their uh, chips. We refuse to send certain chips to China. What's this going to do? This is already hurting our economy. And what it'll do for them is they'll just go elsewhere for these chips. Uh, they'll make so, them themselves or get get them elsewhere. We're, we're not sending them chips, is what you're saying. We refuse to send them certain chips, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a concern, though, that they're reverse engineering a lot of our intellectual property, a lot of our technology, but they're mm. also sending us compromised electronics. That was a big story a few years ago mm-hmm. where they're like, your toaster could be broadcasting a signal and you wouldn't know and it's stealing mm-hmm. your information. And I, I don't think China's our real, our real uh, threat, the number one primary enemy, frankly. Who is? The state, the our United government. United. Our government. Our government. Well, elaborate. Why, why? I mean, our <laughs> government has, look, who has, who's responsible for more deaths of Americans than our government. Uh, we have sent more people over to die than any country has killed. So we're actually provo- provoking other countries. We're entering in all these military expeditions. And in that way, the state itself is more responsible for U.S. deaths than China, Iran, uh, Russia, uh, or uh, North Korea combined. You know, I thought about this. And I was thinking that it, it seems like there's an occupying force that's been controlling this country mm-hmm. because the American people don't want war. Right. They never want war. Almost never. And yet here we are consistently going into wars without having declared war on anybody. And then I think, no, it's probably better to just say we were sold out by our politicians who continue to sell us out. Mm-hmm. So it's not so much that we're occupied. It's that uh, we have a fractured uh, government and a and and corrupt politicians well I don't everyone, th- everyone agrees with well <laughs> i don't know how fractured it is because when it comes to war and military uh 
expeditions and, and foreign policy, this is a uniparty. They're not even, there's no distance between these people. It does seem to be like the only time they ever actually agree on anything is when it's going to war in other countries, right? right. Have there been polls done recently about what the American public's thoughts are on war right now, given, obviously we know what the American people think of war in Ukraine, but have there been studies or any type of polls that have been done talking about what they think about military intervention in Israel? Interestingly, there was a poll done on Biden's approvability rating, which fell by 11% uh, among Democrats. So that's a good sign. So it went from 86 to 75%. And for uh, Arab Americans, it fell like uh, from like 58 to 17% in, in a matter of weeks. So uh, interestingly, there is a divide in the uh, in the population in terms of support for Biden, uh, because, you know, I mean, the le- uh, a lot of the left doesn't want this uh, conflict. Now, they are hypocrites because they were fully in support of the Ukraine war. Yeah. And the right is also hypocritical because now they're in support of this war in <laughs> Israel, but they weren't in support of the war in Ukraine. So and also in hindsight, they oppose the uh, Iraqi war. Isn't that convenient? I want to pull up this story. We got this from The Wall Street Journal. Israeli airstrike uh, uh, hits Jabalia refugee camp and forces extend their advance into Gaza Strip. We have live updates. Apartment buildings were flattened in the strikes. Egypt said it would defend its its territory, but take in wounded Palestinians. So I think we have a, a clip from CNN that I'll play for you. Well, I don't know. if I'll, Basically, this is from uh, uh, Ahmad uh, uh, Eldin. He says, Wolf Blitzer, you knew that there were innocent civilians in the refugee camp, right? IDF spokesperson says this is a tragedy of war. Let me just play the clips. I don't want anything being, being taken out of context for you guys. So we'll just uh, we'll, we'll play this clip for you now. But even if that uh, uh, Hamas commander was there amidst all those Palestinian refugees who are in that in that Jabalia refugee camp, Israel still went ahead and, and dropped a bomb there, att- attempting to kill this Hamas uh, this Hamas, Hamas commander, knowing that a lot of innocent civilians, men, women, and children, presumably would be killed. Is that what I'm hearing? That's not what you're hearing, Wolf. We, again, were focused on this commander, again, who you'll get more data who this man was, uh, killed many, many Israelis. Uh, we're doing everything we can. These are, it's a very complicated battle space. There could be infrastructure there. There could be tunnels there. Uh, we're still looking into it, and we'll give you more data as the hour moves ahead. I mean, they know that there are a lot of refugees, a lot of innocent civilians, men, women and children in that refugee camp as well. Right. This is the tragedy of war, Wolf. I mean, we, wow, as you know, we've been saying for days, move south. <clears throat> civilians are not involved with Hamas. Please move south. Yeah, uh, I'm just uh, trying to get a little bit more information. Uh, you knew there were civilians there. You knew there were refugees, all sorts of refugees. But you decided to still drop a bomb on that refugee camp attempting to kill the Hamas commander. By the way, was he killed? I can't confirm yet. I mean, Wolf should have just let him answer the question. Then he just jumped to another one. We Mm -hmm. get the point. Israel says they carried an airstrike that Hamas claimed killed more than 50 people in Gaza's Jabali refugee camp. Dozens of bodies. Here's here's my issue with this. Uh, that, That CNN interview. Yeah, damning. But they, but Hamas lied about that about the hospital, and many on the left, pro Palestinian groups and left, lied about the hospital. So when stories like this come out, what am I supposed to do? I don't know about the hospital, frankly. I, I'm not sure that the story has really been disbon- debunked. That well, the- it has. They claimed the they claimed the hospital was leveled and five hundred. Okay, they, died. well the hospital wasn't leveled. They hit the parking lot. Yep, and it may have been a couple dozen injured with yep. with a certain a certain number of deaths. We don't. But there's know. been other hospitals hit, and they've told Absolutely. them to get out out of the other hospitals. They've said evacuate these hospitals. And then they tell them they're going to bomb the north, so move south while they're bombing the south. Um, this is unbelievable. So there's nowhere for these people to go. They're shooting fish in a barrel. And they've got them trapped there in, a, in a, a virtual concentration camp. I'm sorry if that sounds like leftist rhetoric, but these people are in a walled area. No, no exit. No exit. What do we do? Nothing? Should the U.S. just back away? We should not, not have. First of all, the U.N. had a, 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 a movement to have a, a, a ceasefire, and we were one of, like, uh, seven countries that refused to go along with it. Hillary, Hillary Clinton, but Hillary there was Clinton a, is very anti-ceasefire. There was a ceasefire when Hamas made the, initiated the, the terrorist attack like three weeks ago. There was a ceasefire between mm. Gaza and, and Israel. Then yeah. Hamas broke the ceasefire. That's what started this whole shindig that's going yeah. on now. It's, it's very, tif- you know, listen, I'm not going to adjudicate the whole history of the region. 
But there's no way October seventh is the beginning of no. This. Yeah, <laughs> no. that's why. That's why I'm kind of like I got. I got. A, I got a really good idea, you guys. We should not be involved. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're. There's a very serious fight happening between two of your neighbors, and people keep asking you whose side you're on. I'm like, bro, I don't live there. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. They're like, yeah, well, like you know, your kid, like your 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 dad is giving weapons to one of your neighbors, and you're like, maybe we shouldn't be doing that. I don't think that there's actually any good answer for the United States at all, because I don't think that we should give any money. I don't think we should no. be funding. I don't think we should mm -hmm. have. Fee we should in any way be right. involved in it. But I also don't think that if we do, what is the right thing for the United States, which is not fund it, not give any money, not support, we're still going to be implicated, and we're still going to be attacked. Even if we're not dealing with actual terror attacks, we're still going to be considered the evil Satan well, that supports Israel and whatever well, just because of our history. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help that we bombed Iraq for no, you know, for a complete under a completely false pretext, killed hundreds of thousands of people, and created millions of refugees. Any it, amount of like backpedaling now, where we go, if we were to just suddenly start backing away from any funding of war, would make us look like the ultimate hypocrites. I don't think world, so. I like, look, Trump. Trump gets elected. Trump to the to them to to the people on the other side of the other ones that are. If you're talking about the people in Gaza or Hamas, they're going to look at. I mean, they're going to look at I, us as hypocrites anyway. See, I just strongly feel this is an anti-Western yeah. movement. The yeah. reason, so the, the Palestinians that are on the ground in yeah. you know in Israel or in, in Gaza or whatever, they hate the Israelis because they have that direct actual situation they're mm -hmm. they're fighting them they're being oppressed by the mm -hmm. the israelis and and that's the situation for them the out the the broader context where you're talking about the region and other countries sometimes western countries the people that are pro palestine and against the israelis they're more about being against the west more broadly they're against western society they don't they tend to not be uh they not they tend to not be supportive of democracies. They want more authoritarian types of governments. Well, so it's not, and I'm not saying that I have an answer. I'm just, I'm this if, is if, just if the West at, lived up to its proclaimed values, perhaps they wouldn't feel that way. I mean, yeah, the, I, the West I, has like, been colleges have kind of implicated that to them. Yeah. And, and I mean, go further down to TikTok and all these other ways in which kids get this messaging now. Like, I don't know how much of that would even matter now. I do agree. Like, I don't think we should be funding any side of it, but I think that what, what it's created for me is what I call, I mean, like it's post concern. It's like a post concern attitude where it's like, there's so much information. There's so much propaganda. There's so much coming mm -hmm. out from every side in a part of the world that I inherently have nothing to do with other than my government's continued intrusion in other people's business. Mm -hmm. What am I? <laughs> yeah. What am I as an American citizen whose taxes are going to fund all this? What am I actually supposed to do in this situation? You're telling me I have to care about this side. They're telling me I have to care about this side. I'm not allowed to care about the people here. Apparently, that's the only people you're not allowed to care about. Well, hold on, it's which people? The Americans. No, people no, actually like, living which here Americans, now. Americans, though. Like, okay. How about the people? In, I mentioned last. Time, how about the people in Hawaii? How about the people in any of the things that have gone on here in the last several years, help, helping trim down the debt in this country, all of the things that we have to worry about stateside before mm -hmm. we go and start getting back reinvolved in other countries? We might we might revolt against yeah. the fact that they're robbing us to do this. Yeah. I mean, they're robbing the American public, the well, American I, taxpayer to, to fund these wars. I think Trump was one of the first attempts of people saying we will rationally decide this man will enact many of these things. Mm -hmm. And uh, now things are getting pretty tense with the machine's desperate attempts to keep Trump out of office. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy when we have uh, Scott Horton, of all people, being like, Trump tried getting our troops out and they lied well, he to tells, us. He tells the truth about all these right. matters. And, but Trump wasn't some, <laughs> you know, savior. I mean, he, he killed Soleimani for, for uh, you know, and, and could have that could have instigated some uh, conflict with Iran. Imagine if if Iran had killed one of our major yeah. generals. I mean, this would have drawn us into war. The yeah. only reason they didn't get drawn into war is because we have a greater force. But that's not the way the United States should be uh, acting acro across the planet. We ought to be the beacon on the hill in the sense that we are a free people, that people admire, that trades with other countries is cooperative and peaceful. This would actually promote peace worldwide. It is true, Phil, that what you said about it being an anti-American movement. Did you see the the infographic meme the other day? It says Free Palestine is a queer movement. Free Palestine is yeah. uh, okay. That's at the heart of it. It's an anti-Western, yeah. anti-democracy movement more than anything else. It's not that they support or love. 
Palestine or Gaza. It's that they love the fact that it puts the West between a rock and a hard place yeah. in dealing with the conflict. Because there is, because and you're right, because yeah. there is no good policy that's going to to make the United States look good. I personally, like I said over and over, we shouldn't be involved. We shouldn't have troops over there. We shouldn't be spending money on it. We shouldn't be funding it. Israel can fight its own war. I like I 100% believe that, but that doesn't mean that if that were the course of action that the United States took, mm -hmm. that the rest of the world would be like, oh, cool, the United States is doing the right thing or the good thing. There are still going to be people that are going to say, oh, the West is bad, America's bad, democracy bad, liberalism bad. Yeah, no, I so mean, when you, when you try to export democracy uh, with bombs <laughs> like we did in Iraq, of course, people are going to be skeptical about think, what is this democracy you're talking about. Yeah, I, I agree, and I just don't think that, I don't think that, it, that it's I don't think that it's limited to the Middle East. I, I think that, that there is an anti-Western, anti-liberal movement that is pretty global. It's, yeah. I think there's an anti-liberal movement in the United States. I, yeah, don't yeah. Think, I don't think there are any liberals left. I agree. We're looking at an illiberal left, effectively. Yeah. But, you know, there's there's no well, liberalism I mean, here. There are. It's just they're the post-liberals. They're the, yeah. the dis disaffected liberals. The, yeah. the funny part is, is like in what I do, like talking about movies, celebrities, Hollywood and pop culture, you see this right now because a bunch of celebrities try to make a post that makes everybody happy and they can't make anyone happy. And this is the first time they haven't been given a clear marching order about who the good guys and who the bad guys are when they write their virtue signaling yeah. letters uh, everyone gets mad at them from every side and I think that the people that are inherently anti-American and anti-Western love that about this. Yeah I, you see mm. I think you see the 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 people that are only tertiary or that only understand the wave tops of the movement the one are those those are the people that are shocked when they are kind yeah. of learning what decolonization means and that mm -hmm. it's a violent revolution that's yeah. being endorsed and and they're shocked they're like wait a minute i didn't i don't want to see people getting their heads cut off i don't want to see you know people's businesses and lives being destroyed and well that's what decolonization is you saw, if we could jump back to the china thing okay what are we what are we doing with reference to china that's weakening us well, we're we're doing all kinds of things. We're instituting a de deindustrialization campaign in the West uh, with the ESG and the stakeholder capitalism, which is about eroding our industrial base, uh, supposedly to uh, mitigate so-called climate change and G uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And this is, you know, this is favoring China. That's something that yeah. we're doing to ourselves. It's a self-inflicted wound. It's a, you know, it's suicidal in effect. We're taking our industries and we're saying you can't burn fossil fuels and we must use this ESG to force all these companies into these uh, into this regime while China then gains all this power and, and wealth on the on the back end because they're not doing it. So let me, let me pull up this story. This is from The Wall Street Journal as well. It's actually just below the other one. Israel goes unnamed on China online maps. So a lot of people noticed that two big companies, you've got uh, Alibaba and I believe Baidu, have removed Israel from their maps. That is to say, this is the CCP. I, mm -hmm. I, there's there's no private sector in China that just at the same time decides, hey, we're doing right. this thing. It looks like the Chinese Communist Party has said there is no Israel now. But I mean, what? So the concern here, there's been a bunch of reporting, or I should say opinions and analysis suggesting this shows China is gearing up to join this on the side of Palestine. It's possible. I mean, they're saying Israel doesn't exist on their map. And I mean, this is, a, you know, listen, I, China is a totalitarian state and uh, they institute uh, their measures without any kind of uh, consent. Uh, there's no question about it. So I would I'm not surprised that they would do this. I don't necessarily means that I uh, think it means that they're going to intervene right now. Although, no, but, but but it's a it's a it's a definite. Uh, I mean, look at BRICS, right? Right. China is absolutely in in partnership with iran mm -hmm. and this is the this is the fear world war three is nato versus BRICS. yeah it doesn't have to be world war three i you know <clears throat> look uh BRICS could be actually something that's good in the sense that if we opened up our own trade then we could probably be part of this and we don't have to disband our our affiliations and our uh our our, our trade associations as we're doing right now the, the the conflicts that we're creating and being you know and and really escalating uh are actually causing these rifts okay because like when we sent arms to ukraine and i think even though you know you said the ukraine war is dying down i bet you that 64 billion is still going over there so being stolen by somebody yep. yeah <laughs> gonna find its way into the pockets of biden perhaps <laughs> yeah Again, I should say.
Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's no question there's corruption here. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't become World War III, I suppose. I hope not. But this is th this w the, what we're seeing now from China is like the first red flag where mm -hmm. I think we should be concerned like guys we need this to turn down and so I'm I'm, I'm now especially with this uh, bombing of the refugee camp mm -hmm. I, see, I see a lot of people I see Hillary Clinton Hillary Clinton uh, had a statement recently where she was like ceasefire you know Israel's being attacked and you want a ceasefire but Hamas is not going to give it and you know, anytime Hillary Clinton says something, I'm like, the opposite must be true. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So she comes out and she's like, we can't have a ceasefire. And I'm like, maybe we need a ceasefire. <laughs> and so uh, we need barometers like that out there. It's right. Great. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, it's like uh, uh, I was I was hanging out at, at, at a poker room. We were talking about um, Jim Cramer and because uh, because I, I can't remember what came up. Something about it's going to snow the train. farmer's farmer's almanac. And then uh, someone mentioned tracking stocks. And I was like, oh, yeah, if you if you if you short set uh, short anything Cramer says, you're gonna be up, and yeah, this one guy yeah. goes, actually, yeah, I think it's up for the, the 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 it's up fourteen percent. If you bought, if you shorted everything he told you to buy, you're up fourteen percent so far for the year. Tremendous, tremendous. But anyway, my point is, Hillary Clinton says, no, we can't do it. We need war, and I'm kind of like, all right, let's figure out this peace solution. And I mm -hmm. think I think it's fair to say that, like I I agree, Hamas attacked Israel, killed civilians, and there's there's two ways to look at this. One way is Israel is going to be taking out Hamas leaders. I, I, I think if, if someone comes at you and attacks your family, you defend yourself and you stop the threat. The problem now is, especially with the bombing of this refugee camp and the and the dead civilians, the collateral damage is becoming too great. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I actually I agree with AOC. I think AOC had a better answer than Hillary. She said a ceasefire goes both ways. We want Hamas to stop. Yeah. And we want Israel. She She effectively said. Hamas needs to stop firing rockets at Israel, and Israel should go in and assassinate Hamas leaders. Yeah, absolutely. Look, if if uh, if some cartel members in, in, from Mexico came into the United States and you know very uh, you know conspicuously killed fourteen hundred people, okay, we would not bomb Mexico. Okay, we should use intelligence assets to find those people and bring them to justice, not to bomb these civilians. This this is. So Israel's turning the world against them. I mean, look at all the countries that are lined up now that would that wanted to cease fire. And how many countries across the globe are condemning Israel right now? Um, I mean, it's almost unanimous. There's only a few out, uh, you holdouts. Know, you know, what's interesting about this conflict is that this is, we, we are at the red, well, how would you describe it? The threshold of Western sensibilities in warfare. Mm -hmm. If you go back 200, let's go back 300 years, 300 year, years. And I think y'all are going to know the answer to this. What would nation A do to the people who were conquered of that land in, in a situation? Like, what, what would be happening if it was 300 years ago? That's a good question. I, th I think it, what happens... I think it's fairly obvious. What? I think if it was 300 years ago, yeah. and we were looking at Israel, Palestine, as it was today, with the, the, the power of Israel and what, uh, uh, what Hamas is doing, the Israelis would go in and shove everyone in the ocean and just mass purge and kill everybody. That's, that's, and I shouldn't say that absolutely because there are many circumstances where countries did not do this. Not right. But the issue is as we advance as moral, civilized people, we are like, hey, we don't think it's good to just go and just kill everybody. Right. But during the colonial period, a lot of that. And so now, this is what's interesting. You've got the left claiming that Israel are the colonizers and they must be resisted with decolonizing things like mm -hmm. that. And if they really were the colonizers that these, the left is claiming they are, the colonizers of, you know, of your, it would be merciless. It well, would I, be brutal. You don't think it's merciless and brutal right now? I think, I, oh, no, 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 no. If, if, if you're saying today's brutal, then we, we, we need a new word for how brutal it would be. If this was 300 years ago. Uh, 300 years ago, there were colonists in Africa. They didn't wipe everybody out. What they did is force... No, but we're talking about if we, 300 years ago, had something akin to Gaza uh, mm -hmm. and, and Hamas and Israel, and a bunch of people stormed into the, the borders of a settlement and massacred 1,400 people... The response from the more powerful nation would be a purge of everyone. Well, I want to qualify something about the 1,400, by the way. Uh, there's there's pretty good evidence that the IDF actually killed some of these people. Now, I'm not saying this is not Hamas's fault, 
but I'm and I'm not exonerating Hamas, but they bombed houses that they thought were uh, being where people were being held hostage by terrorists. They bombed people on they shot people on the street. So I mean, there's a good number that were uh, that were taken out by the IDF, uh, and those charred bodies that you saw in the media, those are not possible. Though that is not possible vis a vis. Uh, the, do, you, uh, do you have a source I can pull up for for that? That's what I've read it in five different places, Tim. So I, I mean, those are serious claims. Uh, I've not si- seen that. Oh yeah, you say that Israel blew up their own villages. They, because blew, they blew up houses in, in which they suspected the terrorists were holding hostages. Yes. I, I, but you need to you need to know your sources on that one if you're in. Uh, look at Middle East, uh, Middle East Eye. We'll try and we'll try and pull something like that up. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know how. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I that's a bold claim. I mean, even even some of the IDF forces said we didn't know what we were shooting at. We didn't. We didn't know, and we just started uh, shooting r- randomly. We didn't know what to do because they were so disorganized. Now, I, I would admit, and it's very true that the Hamas caused a great deal of confusion and threw the whole IDF into a complete uh, quandary. They didn't know what was going on. Uh, and so they actually committed some acts of violence against, uh, inadvertently, their own people. You see, this so is why I don't go anywhere near. This. I, I think that's not true. I think what you're saying is false. Uh, I can't, I, I, okay, I, we'll have to I'll have to follow up with that. Right. So, so this is I, I take this is this is this is the issue I take with the Israel-Palestine conflict is all is all the lies and misinformation that are spread all the time. And uh, but where, where, I've, I've where do you suspect? I've heard I've heard I've heard nothing. About Israel bombing its own villages. Where do you, where do you, no not whole villages. I no, did not say that. It's, it's houses in villages. Right? Houses. Be, I'm not. I'm not they saying they blew up a whole and, village. And I'm accidentally saying, shot people on uh, on the street. And and that just sounds like lies. I mean, and bombed cars where the charred bodies were found. These were not. This is not possible. I don't. I believe it. Okay. Let, let me ask you this, Tim. Like, if, I'm, if, not, if, I'm not saying if, it's if not possible. Were, what What would you think is more likely? The more powerful propaganda. That uh, what's being told by the mainstream media that uh, and through, uh, through coming out of Israel that this is, these are the truths, or would you think that it's more possible that the propaganda is coming from the more dominant forces? Propaganda is coming from both. However, the left has a uh, uh, very strong predisposition towards manipulation and lies and deceit. Well, I'm not a leftist. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. And so the, the the issue is you don't have to be yeah, a leftist yeah. to fall for leftist propaganda. We we debated the hospital bombing on this show mm-hmm. believing mm-hmm. and and we should not have because Hamas made a claim and it wasn't true and now we know it's not true because video emerged the next day showing the parking I think, lot I think it's no rest, I think it's that's kind of it's frankly that it, it's it's really a moot point because of all the civilians they have bombed. They are killing kill, uh, children. You know, more th- children were killed in three months or three weeks. I'm sorry, three weeks this year that have been killed in all wars, uh, and from 2019 to now. Not in each year there were like 2,000 children killed, roughly 2019, 20, 21, 22. In this as, three as, weeks, as, they've as, killed three as, over as, three thousand. That's why I just say, why are we involved? Because I don't know why we're arguing the morality yeah. of two factions fighting a war, exactly, and what the justification yeah. is for arguing at we, all we, that we either don't, side is better or worse. I, I agree. Listen, I'm not saying there's any good guys here, okay? And I, I did read that claim in a few sources, and I I, I don't have the exact uh, source on on the tip of my tongue. But let me just say this: it, it's really immaterial because you're right. There is we don't need to find the good guy and exonerate one side over the other that's that's not the issue i just don't see that but i to to you know, and that includes israel by the way because i think that what they're doing if they have a superior morality to the people that they're killing then why haven't they shown it well i i don't think that i don't think that there's a situation where where the united states is going to be able to come to a to a to a a policy position that's going to make anyone happy. Well, it's not going to be utopia, but it's got to be better than what we've been doing. I don't think that I, I don't know that I believe that now, not that I'm, and again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't try or that we mm-hmm. should fund it. Mm-hmm. Like, every time I, we, I talk, I have to put this caveat because people are going to start saying that, Oh, you're just pro Israel or whatever. But that, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just saying that I don't think 
that whatever course of action the United States takes is going to be sufficient or have a substantive difference. You know what well, I mean? We have so, a lot of history that we, frankly, are besmirched with. And that's going to take, that would take years to actually dissipate. And, you know, there's, there's not, you know, we can't take back the fact of what we did in Iraq. No, that, that's, that you're, you're right. But I mean, the, the, the tumultuous Middle East goes back to the birth of our country. You know, the very, the reason we have the Marine Corps is because of the Barbary pirates off the coast of North Africa. That area is a shit show. And yeah. it's always been an absolute mess. So yeah. the United States can, we can do our best to stay out of the mm -hmm. the political mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. and, and tribal warfare that happens in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know that whatever course of action we take, it doesn't matter about like as, as much as this is not condoning the Iraq war, but the Iraq war is not why the people in the Middle East uh, you don't know, hate us it's it's that's not the reason it's not, it's it's not, not the reason it's, but it's one of them it's not the reason it's not that we built bases in saudi arabia it's not that israel exists it's been that way forever well i mean according so, to iraq that they attacked kuwait the first time because of our bases in in kuwait so i mean there because is some bases in the in in kuwait and I mean, that was the reason for 9 11 as well is because the bases in in the holy right they looked at it like the united states was conquering right uh you know a part of the Saudi Arabia, and I, I understand Our that. Our footprint is too broad. That's the problem. So, yeah, well, it'll take a while to wash off the, 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 the dirt that we've been involved in, but, you know, is there's even, no time like the present to start. I, I Again, I'm, I'm not arguing yeah. that we shouldn't. What I, I'm saying is, even if we take, I think that even if we take the course of action that you believe is the, is, or that libertarians believe is right, and I, I support Not all it, libertarians, not but all. I do. But, and, I, and I support that course of action. I believe that that is a, that would be a good policy, but I don't think that that fixes the problems. I think that I as many, I think it's naive to think that, that that will solve problems eventually. I think that it's it's going to be a mess over there. I want to I wanna pull up this video. We have this from Clown World and mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, this is nothing unique. It's just another one of these videos where we have far leftists tearing down yeah. posters for the people who are kidnapped and being held hostage. Yeah, there's a bunch of these videos. There's another video where a guy puts up a flyer for a Thai farmer, not even an Israeli uh, citizen, a guy who is just working in, in Israel who was kidnapped. And this Asian woman basically in front of him tears down his flyer, his property, destroys it, and then basically tells him to screw off. I see these people and what they're doing. This is evil. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is malicious, intentional evil. These people think they're justified in causing harm, chaos, and destruction. And so, this is the challenge I see when it comes to I don't I don't I don't, I don't care to get in the history of the region. Mm -hmm. We just talk about literally October seventh. You have people glide in, kill a bunch of civilians. Mm -hmm. Max Blumenthal said it's because they see civilians as targets of opportunity. He said, I'm sorry, specifically the music festival was a target of opportunity, and they target civilians to use bargaining chips uh, against the Israeli government. I'm like, oh, okay, so they're evil. That, 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 that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Evil. And uh, what, what's that you say? The U.S. has done really horrible things in the Middle East? Hey, I never said we were mm -hmm. the good guys. Mm -hmm. I'm saying right now we've got a crisis. And what happens is you see these people in New York City defending Hamas, mm -hmm. cheering on mm -hmm. Hamas, celebrating it. They're now in the United States. They're in the West. There was this massive protest in London. This is why I don't believe anything they say. I, I understand what you're saying, and, and let's talk about that story and what's going on there. What is that being done? What's being done here with this uh, imagery? This is despicable what these people are doing, okay? But why has this become news? Uh, this has become news because it, uh, it serves as a deflection. It serves as a deflection. It says instead of being angry about what's going on in, in uh, the Gaza Strip, what's happening to people dying... Instead, we're, we're 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 diverted into this uh, this particular uh, you know uh, despicable act that takes the pressure off of Israel. In effect, this works to this works as propaganda. But you know you know, but sure. But you know why this imagery is important? Why why you see these? People? I think it's very important. But what are they doing with it? That's these the people. These people, given the chance, would kill you in your sleep. Uh, I don't know that. I mean, listen, I, I'm not sure. What, what does decolonize mean? It means to get rid of the colonizers. And, get, and, 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 and how, do you, how do you do that? Them. Well, I mean... Like, it, let's talk about what from from the river to the sea means. Well, I agree with that. That's nonsense rhetoric, and I certainly what, would never uh, so use th it. This is, I'm not saying you do. I'm yeah. saying these people have an extremist ideology. Mm -hmm. It is widespread in the mm -hmm. West now. 
And this is the point I was making about Israel, the, the clash of warfare with and Western sensibilities. <laughs> we as, as Western liberal nations are like, we do not want to like wipe out an entire people. Mm -hmm. We want to figure out how to stop the fighting and then chill everybody the F out. Mm -hmm. Their ideology is from the river to the sea. Yeah. If, if you even just walk through what that means. It's it's horrendous. They're talking about genocide, but I mean, they're not they're not capable of executing it. OK, so the, so the issue then becomes Western sensibility abilities would say act in such a way that allows them to persist the people who would kill you in your sleep right um, here, here, that's a liberal paradox yeah, but it's right uh, yeah exactly exactly that's yeah. that's that's, that's the, the clash of western sensibilities with modern warfare if it were inversed and the israelis were tr were in the gaza strip there is no question they would be shoved into the ocean and mass executed by by the Palestinians. That's the, that's the gold of my air uh, point. But I, I mean, look, I don't I don't know about that. I, I guess we're going to have to adjudicate the history in a little bit. It's I, I'm not I'm not here to, to, to talk about the, 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 the history of the region. Let's just okay. we'll, we'll remove Israel Palestine from this. If far leftists like this mm. are given power, we see what they do with it. They yeah. kill people. Well, they do more than that. But they they, they uh, also kill and torture. Yeah, they try to. Uh, they try. They're totalitarians at base. Okay, leftists are total. It's in. It's intrinsic to leftist ideology. Uh, this is what they did in the Soviet Union. I mean, once they gain power, leftists are totalitarian. Okay, they're for free speech. They're for all this when they're uh, aspirant. But once they gain power, they become. Like, uh, you know, Lenin so, and, and Stalin. And, right. And, even then, so, it's not even necessarily that they're free speech. The, the liberals are for free speech. I don't know if I would even... I don't know if there are any that, liberals. Yeah, where, <laughs> where are the liberals? <laughs> well, we're here, I guess. Yeah. Yes, I guess. <laughs> Classical liberal. Yeah. But um, my point is this, to, to sort of move on from the, 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 the broad topical Israel-Palestine, mm -hmm. but more into the philosophical and ideological. Yeah, sure. We are, we are confronted by, right now, um, actually, we, we can maybe pull this up in a little bit. Elon Musk saying the woke mind virus is destroying civilization. You take a look at San mm -hmm. Francisco. Mm -hmm. We'll go into detail. He was on Joe Rogan podcast. But sure. you take a look at what the woke left represents. And what do you see? 16 year olds chanting from the river to the sea. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They don't care. But they will do it. Well, this this isn't just, you know, look, I, I admit and that's why I'm involved in this. And this is why I was asked to be a candidate, because I am I have been involved in cultural uh, issues and this is a cultural war. We, we must fight in the battle of ideas. And well, so, but, but my, my, my bigger question is, how do you win against a group of people who you know want you dead when you, as a faction, try to preserve life? Right? You have to, they have to be deprogrammed, uh, frankly. They have to be deprogrammed. That's not easy. Almost but impossible. But it's possible. Almost impossible in this day and age. In the age of the internet, when you cannot get them away from a phone, when you cannot actually get them out of the environment that's used to, mm -hmm. it's not just the colleges, it's not just the high schools, it's not just the elementary it's, schools, it's the, it's everything they're getting on their phone. On that I, I don't think there's a liberal solution yeah. no. because in order to pull someone from my, to, to get someone to leave a cult, mm -hmm. you have to remove them mm -hmm. from the cult. Well, you can't I mean, remove them. I got to say, it happened to me, Tim. I, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I used to be a Marxist. You know what did it for me? I was traumatized by them. And that caused my eyes to open. Once I was traumatized by the left, I then said, this, this is a totalitarian uh, contingent that I want nothing further to do with at all. And I, think, I instantly became a civil libertarian. This can a, happen. They eat, you know, the left eats its own. But not not quite fast enough. I think that the the attack the terror attack in, on the seventh it did a lot to yes. wake a lot of Jewish liberals up or or I have a lot of liberals in general. Liberals yeah. in general. I've yeah. had several people yeah. who definitely like who were very um, very much BLM in twenty twenty who started to at least I, I don't know if they were just getting their news from different sources but saw the stuff that Patrice Cullors said back in twenty fifteen mm -hmm. who are now seeing that what you were sold. In those in in those early years in 2020, which everyone told you said this is not what it is. It's mm -hmm. look at what their website says. Look at what all this information mm -hmm. says. They weren't willing to listen. Right. They weren't. They were too filled Be with emotion at that time. And because it was scary, the mm -hmm. the consequences yeah. of saying I am not for Black Lives Matter. Right. You know, in 2020, if you were not a staunch conservative that had people around mm -hmm. you that would support that and that also agreed with you, You're right, right you were not going to yeah. go and out. This and is true. It. This happened with COVID, of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. these yep. people effectively become state agents. Uh, these people that are w walking around telling, "Get the mask on," and they're, they're actually corralling you into the state's propaganda and its narrative. They. This, 
They, uh, 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 no, no, go ahead. They have uh, uh, these programs where this is like 10, 15 years ago. You, uh, a company would ask you to go out and write down license plate numbers and where you saw them so that the state and private companies could track down the people and know where they were. Mm -hmm. Mass surveillance, essentially yeah. snitch on your neighbors. But here's the scary thing. They don't need it anymore nope. because now you're you're carrying around a tracking device everywhere you go. Yeah, you are. So I, I, the, 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 uh, the main issue I see with this is okay. these videos of them tearing down the poster, I think, are extremely important. The reaction from the from the left cheering on Hamas, even right now, these mass protests yeah. in New York. Uh, uh, and I say cheering on Hamas. I quite literally mean it. I am not being cute yeah. and conflating Palestine with Hamas. They're in New York bullhorning in support of Hamas, calling them the resistance fighters mm -hmm. who fired X amount of rockets and killed X amount of settlers. They say settlers are not civilians. How do you, I mean, is it, is it, uh, th this is the challenge. How do you deprogram someone when you cannot isolate them from the information? The challenge we mm -hmm. face as people who believe in, you know, civil libertarian values, the right of free speech is that, okay, on a platform like X or on Facebook or YouTube, we're going to let everybody speak. What mm -hmm. happens? Silos emerge of far left extremism. We allow that to happen. Then within that sphere, they start spreading, oppressing and crushing their opponents, gaining more and more power and silencing the rest of us. If we allow them the platform, they'll use it to destroy us. They will not allow us the platform. So we, are, we, we have set ourselves up at a, at a, at a, in, in a downward slope, as it were, where, where it seems. And this is why, uh, again, Elon Musk, uh, we'll, we'll pull that up in a second, why he bought Twitter to reverse this process. But how do you deep like the, the answer to deprogramming these people? Ban TikTok. There you go. Ban TikTok. Regulate the algorithms and mandate. Well, I American mean, you might look at the fact that, that big, exactly you does you that? can't you can't big digital. But am I supposed to expect that the U.S. government is going to be? I don't want the U.S. government doing that so, either. So the problem is, what would need to happen is an organic pro-American, you know, a, a OG ideological faction canceling people and saying mm. this is the way we do things, and if you are a communist or a fascist, we don't we don't sell to you. We don't welcome you in yeah. our stores. Well, it's called, yeah. I mean, this, but, but, this is very much of a, a tradition within libertarianism. It's kind of a joke, you know, uh, physical removal of communists from our midst. Uh, but let's get back to the, the technology aspect, if we can. The problem is not just that these people are cultivated on the, in these echo chambers, that until Musk bought Twitter, and I think Musk is kind of a black swan right now, until he bought Twitter, the whole... Uh, big de digital social media and search was all dominated by leftism all the way down the line. Big, uh, Google, for example. Try is de-Googling your phone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 L l actually, let, let me pull the clip up from Elon and then we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll carry on. Yeah. This is uh, Charlie Kirk has this tweet. A year after Elon Musk bought Twitter, he finally explains why. He says that the niche ideology that turned San Francisco into a zombie apocalypse would historically be geographically isolated and the fallout would therefore be limited. But Twitter gave that philosophy an information technology weapon, which it could use to spread that mind virus to the whole planet unopposed. In order for the mind virus to propagate, it must suppress opposing viewpoints. Rogan says, because it doesn't stand up scrutiny, and Musk says, correct. I'll just play the clip for you. It's two mm -hmm. minutes long. Uh, mm -hmm. you've, you've owned X for a year now. <laughs> the costume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's he do, wearing? Do you, do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and have a dream that you didn't do it? <laughs> And your life is infinitely easier? Well, it's certainly um, a recipe for trouble, I suppose, or contention. Um, what was it ultimately that led you to make the decision to do it? I mean, this is going to sound uh, somewhat melodramatic, but I was worried about that, that it was having a corrosive effect on civilization. Uh, that it was uh, just having a bad, a bad impact. It um, still is. And um, I think part of it is that it, it's where it's where it was located, which is uh, you know downtown San Francisco. Um, and while I, I think San Francisco is a beautiful city, and and we should really fight hard to um, kind of right the ship of San Francisco. If you've walked around downtown San Francisco, right near the X FK Twitter headquarters. It's a zombie apocalypse. 
I mean, it's rough. Have you have you been been in that area? Not lately. No, yeah. I've heard. It's crazy. I've heard it's crazy. I've heard you you really can't believe it until you actually go there. You can't believe it until you go there. So now you have to say, well, what philosophy led to that outcome? And that mm-hmm. philosophy was being piped to Earth. So, um, you know, a philosophy that would be ordinarily quite niche and geographically constrained, so that that the sort of the fallout uh, area would be limited, um, was effectively given an information a weapon, um, mm-hmm. a te- uh, inf- information technology weapon to propagate uh, what is essentially a mind virus to the rest of Earth. Um, yep. And the outcome of that mind virus is very clear if you walk around the streets of downtown San Francisco. So, I, I mean, really, he hits the nail on the head. If you look at San Francisco, the human feces everywhere, the, mm-hmm. the ridiculous uh, yeah. real estate prices, it's a, it's a, it's a wasteland of failed policy. But because so much information control was centralized there, information mm-hmm. systems, it was piping that that I would I would call it like fecal data, yeah, the the equivalent of feces in data form into the brains of people, and it, it was just melting their brains and tainting them with a mind virus. You look at San Francisco and you can see that ideology is and has been popping up all over this yeah. country. Mm-hmm. He's he's a, Elon is trying to shut down. I still think he's got a long way to go. Beyond that, there's also just failed governmental policy that plays a huge role in that. If we're looking at DAs who aren't prosecuting violent crime, people who are uh, like, uh, dep- I'd actually be interested to know what your position is as but a libertarian look, is uh, uh, on. Uh, go ahead. But th- this is this is be it's the policy is because of yeah. social media. It's it's it's, it's the ideology people that's getting spread. elected that it was yeah. it was uh, the free speech wing of the free speech mm-hmm. party, and then it turned into. A, a campus a safe space for a bunch of whiny baby millennials. But look at the, look at who's opposing Elon Musk now. Uh, he's getting a he's gotten a lot of pushback from the woke cartel, as I call it. Uh, and one of the major pushbacks he's getting is from the ADL. I mean, he had to sue them because they really wrecked his business at the fir- in the beginning, ruining his advertising base, pulling all these advertisers out. Now, what that what is that about? So we're looking at it. this mind virus uh, is in the establishment, and it includes trying to squelch speech, and it includes critical discourse about some very serious issues. And, and groups like the ADL that have all of this kind of power in the system because they're automatically perceived by anyone who isn't aware of what's going on as a net force for positive good in the world, mm-hmm. when we know that it's been weaponized time and time again against various people who just happen to have ideas that they disagree with. Mm-hmm. So so you you were a leftist professor. Yes, I was. And you sh- you broke out of this because... You said the left traumatized you. Yeah, they traumatized me. What did they do? Um, they came they after called, they me. Called you like I, I started criticizing all this social justice woke stuff on campus. For example, they, uh, the the no platforming, you know, the uh, bias reporting hotline. That was a big one. They instituted this like reporting spy system in which the students could report on you for making a. Uh, a woke infraction, you know, what they call a bias infraction. And I thought it was like a Stasi state system. Yeah. And I, th- I, th- yeah, I spoke up about it. I would not put the, the phone number or the, uh, or the email address on, of this bias reporting hotline on my, uh, on my syllabi. Okay, so they, and then I, I was interviewed. Uh, I started this uh, Twitter account. It's now been canceled uh, before uh, Elon took over, but I can't get it back. It was called Anti PC NYU Prof. And I started tweeting criticisms of all this from the standpoint of a professor at NYU was interviewed. And Twitter banned you? Not yet. Not yet. No, they, but I mean, like, they did ban it. They eventually. they eventually banned this profile. Yes, they did. Wow. Yeah. And I haven't been able to revive it even after Elon's takeover. But then uh, I did this interview, and I criticized all this stuff publicly, and within two days, the dean uh, calls me into the office, coerces me into a leave of absence. The diversity, equity, and inclusion group condemns me. I get a bunch of blistering emails from faculty saying that I was uh, alt-right, Nazi, uh, oh, short pants, white devil, uh, all kinds of ludicrous things, racist, sexist, the whole nine yards. Anti-gay. Now, today, I would just, you know what I'd write back is LOL. <laughs> but, but then I actually cared what these people thought. 
just remember the people tearing down the people tearing down those photos of of the Israelis would actually be the ones calling you a Nazi. Probably back huh? then. So yeah, they would. Yes. Well, so at the time, what did you do? You wrote an apology or something? Oh no. No, I started, I wrote Springtime for Snowflakes, for one. <laughs> okay. And uh, I stood up to them. And uh, I eventually sued them. I sued NYU and five professors that were libeling me all through the uh, official NYU listservs. And eventually they, you know, they settled with me. You know how I got them to settle? You'll love this. Uh, they threw out the, uh, mo they, they filed a motion to dismiss the case, and my lawyers could not uh, overtake this uh, huge army of attorneys that NYU had. So I invited Milo Yiannopoulos to speak in my classroom, <laughs> listen to this, on Halloween itself, okay? Uh. And the topic of the, of the talk was going to be how you're not allowed to wear a Halloween costume for one night but you can change your gender by day. Okay, that was the topic. And they shut it down. Guess this. De Blasio actually intervened and shut down my classroom himself. Whoa. Yeah. How, how did he, what did he do? He, he called NYU and said, this is too dangerous for to take place. Now, of course, we know the danger was coming from Antifa, who yeah. actually put a target on my back and through Twitter were threatening to kill me. Wow. Uh, I've been yeah. told that Antifa is not even a real thing. It's not even a real thing. Oh, it's just, it's just an idea. It's just an idea. It's an idea that's in a lot of people's heads to make them act like Antifa. To, to what you said, <laughs> yeah. though, like you, you, what you went through kind of circles the point of what you're saying is like if you push back yeah. most people don't have the resources to go against groups like this which mm -hmm. have massive budgets endowments whole groups you know yeah. cadres of lawyers to back up I and realized this has been propagating I touched, for decades. I touched the third rail that there was significant power behind that and I realized at that point that this social justice or what we now call wokeness was really the power this was embedded in the power structure if everybody who is uh, currently facing a, a criminal uh, proceeding mm -hmm. pleaded not guilty, the system would collapse. Really? Yeah, the system relies on uh, people taking plea bargains. And so that's oh. that's why they the system, in my view, is completely unconstitutional. It's the, uh, I, I promote the jury tax or the trial tax. Some right. people call it different things. The idea being that they will always say to you, whatever, whatever it is you've committed, you're getting the maximum. Right. You know, it's like, oh, you you uh, you were speeding. That's you know, you were going 20. You were going 30 over the limit. That's that's felony territory. You're getting a year in prison and we're going to make sure that when you're convicted, you get it or plead guilty. It accelerates the process. Well, so they you, could funnel more yep. people through because they don't. It, it's impossible to act. Well, it's because nobody wants to do the work. And so this is a huge failure of our system. It's yeah. supposed to be difficult and expensive to make, make sure we uphold justice. Yeah. But you see, we got a lot of people who don't want to deal with it. They're lazy. I don't know you. I don't care. Used to be that if a cop stopped you, and I mean like early days of cops, people knew the cop in their neighborhood. Or you had a sheriff, you know, or a constable, I guess. And they knew the people and, and social scrutiny played a role in whether or not they would be abusive. Most cops now, don't even live in the area. Absolutely. That and so when uh, COVID happened and Attila's gym stayed open, mm -hmm. the local cops said, have a nice day, everybody. Exactly. So they pulled in cops from a different city who said, mm -hmm. we are now going to start cr putting the boot on your neck. Yeah, this is why I, in my campaign is a promotion of localization and decentralization Amen. to wrest control from the central government vested in the people at the local level and then nullify unconstitutional laws and mandates yeah. that are coming down. Yeah. How many departments, cabinet level departments, would you get rid of if you want? Cabinet level. Oh, that's a, that's nice. I get to the cabinet level departments after I get rid of the IRS, the CIA, the okay. ATF, the uh, the FBI, uh, of course, the <laughs> Fed. Here we go. Etc. The yeah. first one, the Fed. The Fed is obviously the big monster, okay, yeah. but it's not as easy to get rid of as, as just go in and axe it. You have to get an act of Congress. But in the meanwhile, we can erode its power by promoting parallel currencies, Bitcoin, etc. Yeah. Uh, and that means you wrest the power away from this money monopolist. And you use currencies on your own in the local communities or in across communities. This erodes their power base as a monopolist. I like this endorsed thank you well all right huh i said well all right then. all right then you see all the memes that have been going around for like uh all the libertarians like dad libertarians on halloween it says like me uh it's a it's a picture of ron paul it says when i implement the dad tax on my son's halloween candy and he slowly turns into bernie sanders <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's uh let's uh
Uh, I guess we'll just talk about Ron DeSantis' uh, uh, boots again. <laughs> yeah. Why those boots it every, are made for has, has walking, but not for, not has, for DeSantis. <laughs> has this been happening every night, or is it just the nights I'm on here? It feels like every time I'm on, yeah. we're talking about DeSantis' Okay, well, boots. look, it's because Donald Trump <laughs> has chimed in and said this is the kiss of death for Ron DeSantis. <laughs> and, uh, this, you know, look, Ashley St. Clair. I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, let me slow down. You know how we have these really awesome quotes from the founding fathers? And you'll, you'll like look in a book and you'll be like reading about some crazy dude in the 16th century and he'll say something like, the, the king hereby declareth through divine providence means as much, uh, uh, declarations of divine providence mean as much to me as the manure of a horse. And you're like, <laughs> wow, like look how bold. Now it's like, that was because when they wrote things down, it was rare. They talked a lot of smack, but they rarely wrote things down. So when they did, they really thought them through. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to have quotes from people in the history books that just like i got some quotes for you man like if you go through my twitter and pull up some of the quotes people are going to be like what <laughs> like you know like posting pictures like someone's gonna put like i posted a picture of a hairless rabbit once <laughs> for no reason yeah and it's like you couldn't imagine the founding fathers doing i mean you, you could they, they would be silly sometimes like ben franklin was known to be to, to have a sense of humor but so now we're looking at the story about Ron DeSantis and his, and, his, and his high heels. Of course, he is absolutely, I think it's proven at this point, beyond a reasonable doubt, he's wearing high heels. <laughs> <laughs> he's been convicted in shoe court. In public court. <laughs> well, because there's that video where he's walking and, and it, 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 you know, his foot doesn't exist. It, it folds. It weird. folds straight well, in. Well, I saw the interview. But my, my, but says my point, it was off the rack my point, shoes. <laughs> yes. And, why, and who says that? My point is this. The history books are going to, are going to say... <laughs> What I don't know what date was, but like you know, in in October of 2023, Ashley St. Clair posted a video making fun of the Ron DeSantis campaign and putting on thigh high cowboy boots, the res which which generated a response from from Ron DeSantis' PR team. This led to a larger conversation on the Tim Guys Are All podcast. Finally, a statement from the president for, from the from the front runner for the Republican Party on his his rival wearing high heeled boots. This is what the history books are going to say. Unbelievable. We live in such an unserious time. It's unbelievable. It is unserious it. in a sense. Like, yeah, it, but it, it feels like a sitcom episode where like he's going around and they're like, "You're wearing high heels." Like they're not heels; they're lips. And he has to keep correcting people. It's a dystopian, yeah. dark comedy, it is. though. Right? I'm, I'm okay with it, though. You Why know? didn't they stuff his boots? Like, look at this picture. <laughs> Like, guys, take some toilet even, paper. They're even too long. Not only are they too right. high, they're too long. What, what is this? So well, just the, pick them up at a hand. They're, they're, they're too toes. long because his foot's pulled back on yeah. a, a, lump, oh, I see. On a lift. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and then a lot of people are pointing out when he said uh, they're off the rack, Lucchese boots. People are like, who says off the rack? <laughs> No, he also said that. he hadn't so seen. The he's, like, he's like, oh, I haven't seen this. I'm like, you've seen this, bro. Don't, but anyway, don't anyway, the point me. is, the point is, <laughs> Donald Trump chiming in, and uh, do we have the? Uh, I think the post millennial had. Let me let me let me pull up the post millennials version because they. I think they actually have the statement from Donald Trump. I guess the Daily Beast didn't have the statement. They just mentioned that Donald Trump chimed in. I don't know. Whatever. Let me see. Uh, I think. Uh, what do we got? Here we go. Trump campaign responds to Bootgate. <laughs> calls it the kiss of death. Kellen so, is claiming Bootgate is his. Kellen, Bootgate? K Kellen is claiming that that's his term, that he came up with Bootgate. Claims a lot of things. A so, scathing yeah. new article from Politico about Ron DeSanctimonious' high-heeled shoes comes on the heels of an embarrassing interview on the Patrick Bet David show that led to Bootgate trending on X. When asked directly about why his boots look like stilts, DeSanctis offered up the implausible explanation that he just wears off-the-rack Lucchese boots doing major brand damage to a great American footwear company. <laughs> oh, yeah. You That's see, some brand damage, this is, all right. This is why Trump wins against DeSantis, at least. Mm -hmm. Because that's the kind of funny statement, yeah. on, like a side joke where it's like you accuse DeSantis of, of, of besmirching the good name of Lucchese. He says, if there's any enterprising journalist willing to contact the Lucchese press team for their thoughts on DeSantis, they are reachable here. <laughs> And then he links to it. In another moment of insanity, Ron offered up the laughable claim that he's 5'11". Instead of telling the truth and just being comfortable in his own skin, he resorts to borderline psychotic behavior by lying to the American people. Is that what this country wants in a president? Okay, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this is not from, it's, just, it's Stephen Chung, Trump's spokesperson, but I just want to say, I think Ron DeSantis is the dumbest politician I've seen in my life. The yeah. dumbest. Yeah. Um, look, policy-wise, did some good stuff. I'm now going to chalk it up to the Florida State Legislature, 
a large body of individuals pushed forth a bunch of ideas and Ron said, OK, sounds good. And he's getting all the credit for it. Hmm. Ron has got to be the dumbest guy in politics because he's had every opportunity after every single blunder and failure. He won't fire these guys. He won't mm -hmm. fire his PR team. It's yeah. almost like he's doing it on purpose. Maybe Ron's the smartest guy in politics, and I can't understand why it is well, he would destroy himself in this way, or he's just really, really dumb. He's dumb, but let's let's talk about how unfortunate it is that our political discourse has, has and I don't want to come off as the pendant and the uh, former professor, et cetera, et cetera, but look at the depth to which our discourse has sunk. If we can't win in the realm of ideas, we have to resort to boots and bootgate. Boot well, gate. it was, <laughs> look, it's Halloween. This was the trending story this morning when I wake up. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's like 100,000 tweets, bootgate, boots, <laughs> Trump. It's accessible. And I'm like, it's fun. It's accessible yeah. to everyone. It's and fun. It, it is kind of what has turned politics into a bit of a spectator right. team sport, which team sport. I, I admit that it's, is it necessarily the greatest thing for America, for America as a whole? No, but I have a lot of fun with it. It's so fun. Really doesn't it's bother fun. me. It's fun. I, <laughs> I wish it was like a cartoon instead of reality. Yeah. But I know. was uh, recently, <laughs> recently, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald was on uh, Jordan Peterson's podcast. And mm -hmm. one of the things that they were talking about was people today with the with the kind of the the fact that religion became less important in communities and less important to Americans, people replaced religion with essentially what boils down to state worship it's not yes. quite that but but that's mm. that's essentially the effect mm -hmm. um and i think that's probably the biggest problem that we have in the u.s now i'm i'm an agnostic i don't particularly have a religion that i you know that i i'm i'm more uh mm -hmm. more you know more likely to to be supportive of or whatever but i don't think that we have the option to not have a religion. Mm -hmm. People, there's a lot of people that get it in their head that humans should just evolve past religion. And they just don't have any idea that they don't have any idea how evolution works, if mm -hmm. that's what they think, because it yeah. takes an outside force for there to be evolution. Religion is ubiquitous across humanity, whether no matter what society you, you, you look at, every society, no matter how far they are apart in mm -hmm. distance or in time, every society that, that has had human, there's been created by human beings, mm -hmm. has had some kind of religion with it. Religion yeah. is as inseparable from, hu from the human experience and from psychology, from the human psychology, as I think as humor or as any other interpersonal relationship. Mm -hmm. It's probably a psychological phenomenon built to deal with our own, to deal with be, having uh, uh, the motivation I, to keep us alive and at the same time- Connect. Can, well, no, I, at I, the same time dealing with the it, fact it, that we are finite and going yeah. to die. Real quick, yeah. I was thinking a lot about this earlier and I was thinking about uh, Kurt Cobain Mm -hmm. And uh, I was thinking about um, who was I thinking about? Uh, just a bunch of musicians who've, who've killed themselves. And I was just like, how is it that someone like Kurt Cobain? Okay, maybe it's not a good example because there's conspiracy theories around whether or not he actually killed mm. himself. But there are many uh, uh, rock stars mm -hmm. who uh, you know what I was thinking of? I was thinking of Matthew Perry, and uh, uh, he's found underwater in his hot tub, drowning, cardiac arrest. Depends on the reports. And a lot of people said, look, man, this is a guy who did a lot of drugs in his day and was like pretty messed up and depressed for a while, right? Is that just- Yeah, and also hot tub when with any heart condition is a no-go, not so, a good idea. So I started thinking this like, how could you be on the show Friends, the biggest show, and like still one of the biggest shows ever, mm -hmm. making, how much were they making per episode? It was like a million bucks. M more than so that. More, yeah, like, yeah, several point, million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then resort to doing drugs. I'm like, how do you- That's the norm. But it, but it, no, but no, 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 but, but I, I think I get it. Hmm. How come Elon Musk is the world's richest man and is not doing drugs and not drinking? Purpose. And exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for for if you're a regular dude and you're funny and then someone says, would you like to be funny in my show? And you're like, sure. And every day you struggle. Every day you're trying to figure out how to pay the bills. Every day you're waking up figuring out how you're going to pay your rent. And then one day someone says, make this joke on TV. You do. Boom. Biggest show in the world. All of a sudden you have no struggle. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you are loaded with cash. You have nothing to do. You don't have to worry for anything. And you've never you've never had a strong purpose. Your purpose has always been to survive. Mm -hmm. But now you don't mm -hmm. have to. Whereas Elon Musk's purpose is 
advance humanity in the ways he yeah. wants to. Mm -hmm. So what's what what's missing, I believe, and it always it just roots down to one simple thing for many people: religion. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, I think the point was made that you know statism has become a religion, and, yeah. and this was the case. And identity and, politics. And notice, that's and that's the, how they, they they fight the depression. Yeah. Right there, you've got these young women that are chock full of crazy pills. You know what the most irritating thing to me is when I hear like some millennial woman be like, "He needs a Xanax," or like, "I took a Xanax." Like, no, stop <laughs> doing these things. Well, look, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Your doctor prescribes it. You do what your doctor says. But I'm just like, it's insane that people are like, well. Better take a mood stabilizer. Mm -hmm. They tell everybody else to get therapy, not realizing that it's not necessarily for everybody. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, we've medicalized a lot of the world today. To act to your point with actors, I think a lot of it also has to do with the fact that they have a, a, a very dangerous combination of both insanely high egos and extremely uh, sensitive personalities because uh, the profession as a whole requires you to be very much vulnerable all the time, which leads to heavy drug use for a lot of them. And I think that's true of a lot of what's going on in American culture right now is there's I, a lot of uh, there's a lot of depression there's a lot of sadness and people it, it could be that they're not filling it with religion like they did in the past and the people that are filling it with what we would call now identity politics or the state as a religion yeah. are being fed uh, an ideal an ideological mm -hmm. means of hatred yeah and, the state's and a failed religion a yeah. statism is a failed religion it will not sustain you like if you want if we're talking about marxists telling you whoever told you you've been raised to hate your country you've been raised to hate people that are that see the world differently than you while being told that they're oppressing you even though yeah. that dude's as poor <laughs> that that dude is as poor yeah. and is in as miserable as you and are no, how is that not he, a world of depression and sadness yeah. for people? and it gives you a sense of moral superiority which is the most oh, dangerous yeah. part you, it allows you to to oppress people to act violently mm -hmm. punch, the whole punch a nazi yeah. thing it's like yeah. as soon as as soon as as soon as the argument was it's acceptable to punch a nazi everybody became a nazi mm -hmm. because it was just whoever i want to punch as a nazi it's, that's the excuse du jour so it gives people the excuse to behave terribly mm -hmm. to behave with aggression and 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 malice towards other people and feel like they are that's they so are great. doing the morally correct thing and that's i forget who it was but someone someone quoted that that's the most delicious of psychological yeah. treats to be hey. able to abuse someone and feel like you're doing it as a good thing and if you look at the the jihadis the the the, the Islamic terrorists. Mm -hmm. That's what they all do. Mm -hmm. They all believe that they're the they are in the right, and if they beat the crap out of an infidel, God wanted them to. So that mm -hmm. was a moral thing. Throwing gay people off a building, it doesn't matter because God wanted it. You can be as atrocious to people that don't believe in your religion as you want because God has said it. And it's the same type of attitude from the Marxists and the far left when they're saying, yeah. "Oh well, beat the Nazis." Another, up. another thing about wokeness as a religion, it, it's it's you know unlike Christianity there's no redemption under no. wokeness, right so if you're white and you know male you're 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 damned for for eternity there's no way out and uh you know going back to your point about religion uh anthropologists have suggested that you know why religion is so uh, durable is because it actually came at the same time as civilization as we got into uh creation and you know creativity innovation etc it, it sprouted at that exact same moment so it's no surprise that it's it's so uh it's so recalcitrant for some or otherwise you might say it's very uh it's it's uh you know, a kind of permanent part of the yeah. human uh, life. And I'm agnostic as well, but imagine the hubris of like just now in this time period feeling like you found the answer yeah. that every generation yeah. in the past <laughs> didn't need. Like, the, 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 the atheist movement in the early 2010s probably did more damage to America mm. than it's, it's, ex I, it's exhausting. I, I do love these like 18 year old leftists who think they've discovered universal truth that oh, no God. one else has ever, has ever thought of. And like, they just have not read yeah. any philosophers. Yeah, I was 18 yeah. for once too. I think a lot of it is like in the age of the internet, like the the ease of access to information, and this is something that I think we're all, at least somebody like me is guilty of as well and have to like put myself in check. Like knowing something isn't the same thing as understanding it. Mm -hmm. Like, and you have access to a lot of information and then you have people believing that they know better than somebody who's practical in their field. And mm -hmm. that's just not the way the world works, right? Yeah, you have to actually live things and experience things to have real knowledge. It, it isn't something you can impart through just information per se. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. 
It's uh, all of it is very like that is the most depressing. Like out of all the conversations we just had, that might be the most depressing. Like all the war and everything, but it's like everything that's going on. I find like what's gone on in the last because it's like it's been so quick in the last twelve to fifteen years. The the shift in American values in the last fifteen years has been so abrupt. But why is that shift happening? Yeah. Because millennials are entering the workforce. So it was a crazy moment for me when I used to play shows as a teenager. I'd go to a cafe and I'd play an open mic and then one day I turned 21. And when I used to play shows as a teenager, everyone at the shows was always between the ages of like 16 and 20. Because as soon as you turn 21, you're at the bars. So mm -hmm. I turned 21 and I'm like, I'm going to find an open mic. And I'm like, oh, here's one. I'm like, I'd go to openmic.com. And I'm like, oh, it's at a bar. I show up, everyone's 40. And I was like, whoa, this is kind of weird. Like I've never experienced this. All of a sudden, it was like the training wheels come off and welcome to the real world. The entire bar is full of people of all different. Like, there's like several decades here of different values, different worldviews. I had now at that point entered that this adult space for the mm -hmm. first time playing shows with people with tremendous, way more experience, way more uh, opinions, more knowledge, more wisdom. Some stupid people don't get me wrong. And so what happens is we we're like, how did it, how did the world, how did, how is this country changing? It's not that people are becoming woke. It's that. Young people were indoctrinated to be woke, mm -hmm. and now they're old enough to have an influence in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. in politics. But there's a white pill I'd like to drop on all this. Is oh, I think I, I do think there's going to be a, a renaissance of uh, liberty-minded people. It's going to come out of this movement uh, because, there, as you pointed out, it's a path to just you know destruction, destitution, yeah. uh, economically, socially. It leads to you know uh, decadence and and. Uh, there's going to be a renaissance of lit of, of liberty-minded people coming out of this woke contagion. I hope that's true, but I'm going to be honest. Like, like when I the, the number one place where I see this topic is when people talk about the housing market, when they talk about the price of housing, how so many young people are being priced. You know, the your parents say go to college. You're like, oh, you went to college in a part-time job. Blah blah blah. We see these these very very doomer descriptions mm -hmm. that are accurate. They're mm -hmm. accurate to the world we're living in right now. But I don't think that creates people who want free markets. Because because yeah. they've been poisoned to believe that the free yeah, market is, 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 is a yeah, but I think we're, we're gonna it's we're gonna, gonna create communists and it's gonna create socialists. <laughs> yeah, but they're gonna they're gonna experience the misery that that brings, and you that's know, we're all gonna experience. Yeah, we all are, and then <laughs> yeah. we're gonna have to fight our way out. Yeah. We, we have to yeah. fight our but way I think out. Get, There's I think no we question. get that before we get to uh, before we get back to living. Yeah, I mean, there, it's gonna be San Francisco times ten everywhere. Well, it's depressing. Unless Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced that it gets to a communist soviet style not exactly country. no no i think i think we may already be out of the tailspin and starting to pull back mm -hmm. if you look at bud light sponsoring ufc we all kind of groaned when they did but now you see sean strickland being like oh yeah let's see how bud light responds to this dude getting up on stage with a bud light in hand saying a whole bunch of anti-woke and defensive things <laughs> to make the point bud light is forced to back him mm -hmm. now and back his speech and his speech is not favorable towards trans even, people. Mm -hmm. Even if the tide is turning, and you might be right about the tide turning, even if it is, this is something that is going to take a while to get mm -hmm. out of the schools mm -hmm. because there are yeah. people that are going to fight like but hell. No, and there's oh, also oh, oh. industry that's already built in. You've wait, got wait, wait, people wait, wait, with wait, wait. tenure that aren't going to want to give up their jobs. You've got in, you've got yeah, niche but who cares industries. About they're, as long as they're in schools and they're teaching kids these I, things, kids are going to be coming out then, of schools. But, and but you have 20 yes, years yes. Of, of graduating classes that believe this crap. But, I, but I, what I'm saying is two things. First, we, we, we've, part of the movement has already been to criticize schools in general for the, everything they are. Yeah. Not just be like, oh, there's wokeness in schools. No, it's right. outright like schools are bad. Homeschool your kids. Exactly. But then also, if young, if, if, if you go on Twitter... If you go on X, if you go on Instagram, you go on these platforms and you have the wrong opinion, you're made fun of, you don't get followers. If the shift among prominent popular people and celebrities is against the wokeness now, especially because of Israel. Yes. These young, look, look I've told this story before when I went to VidCon in like 2016 and uh, I'm walking, as I'm walking in, I see these group of kids, probably 13 years old. And one kid goes, you have 80 followers? How do you have 80 <laughs> followers? Wow. And like these little kids are growing up in a world where follower count matters. And that's going to warp their brains in crazy ways. But guess mm -hmm. what? If you're in high school and you're like, I want a million followers. And then you see all the celebrities are getting behind Israel and opposing yeah. the left. Right. And now you get Amy Schumer retweeting or posting on Instagram campus reform, mm -hmm. which is a more right leaning yes, it is. outlet. 
Now these young people are like, I want a million followers. Yeah, I want to be a celebrity, and they're going to go in this yeah, direction. Yeah, that's right. I think that I've said this in my book, Great Reset and the Struggle for Liberty. We need defection from the elites. We're always going to have elites. Uh, there's a natural elites, you know, not just those that are propped up by the state and other artificial measures, but we need defectors. And you know, perhaps Elon Musk is one. We need other defectors from the elite. Trump. And yes, you could be right. And pull, you know, so give people somebody to. You know, we need public voices that that come out against all this, and that will be a big part of this. And I hope to make my campaign part of that. And that is to you know be publicly stating these things, undoing there, the are, mind virus. Is there like a primary for the libertarian? Yeah, party? there is a primary. When is it? It's ongoing now. And oh, it's goes, ongoing now. Oh yeah, it goes well. See, we we have a convention in May. And that convention, that's where the uh, candidate is chosen by delegates. Delegates? Yes, it's not uh, an open voting system. It's a delegate selection system. That doesn't sound very libertarian. <laughs> uh, I, I, no, no. There, uh, that, what you mean to say is that doesn't sound democratic, but um, libertarianism and democracy are, yeah. are kind of, there's a tension there. Based Let's be right. real about that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because no, actually, li democracy in, in, in its extremes, it infringes property rights. 100%. Okay, yeah. so, you know, three out of four say your, your, your money is mine. Uh, you know, there you go. You can rob that guy. So, but I, but I, I do kind of feel like... System. But I do kind of feel like, you know, just start from the ground. If, if you're a libertarian, mm -hmm. the question is, why does anyone have authority over me? Right? Good question. And so and no, and nobody does. As libertarians, we, we don't think you sh we should have authority over there. So, so why if, am I running for office? Is that where you're going? <laughs> no. Why, why? Why is it a delegate based system that's determining who gets to be the nominee? Why? Do, why? Why does the party have the authority over over my choice in who should be the nominee? Who should be? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, now, I'm, to, be, I'm to not, be to be fair, it's because the party is giving them the backing, basically. Yes, that's so right. The, so the party is choosing. Right. At least it's honest about it. Look at the Democratic right. Party, what they're going to do. Right? What, <laughs> well, what they were going to do to Kennedy, for example, and they made it very right. clear. It didn't matter how many votes he got. They were going to give it to, uh, to Biden or whoever. I hope they, they give it to Biden. Whoever they stand up. Biden needs to be the nominee. I don't think he will be, though. Whoever I, they stand up. Yeah, I mean, Newsom. if they can stand him up, you know, long enough to... Uh, Gavin, <laughs> Gavin Newsom met, Gavin met Newsom. with uh, Xi Jinping yeah. because he knows... He sees the writing on the wall, yeah. same as everybody else. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be Biden. Feels like mm -hmm. Gavin Newsom. Like the more the more that I see about it, yeah. Like there's there's a lot of play like, out there. Even on when him. you see conservative women being like, "I hate his guts," but the guy's handsome. You're just like, man, this is like he definitely has like an an evil quality about him. Take what, a look what, around Los Angeles. Yeah. Take a look around San Francisco. Yeah. Look at the outrageous uh, destitution and horror that this this guy's policies have if, brought to this uh, you to know, this state. We've talked about how the way to remove Joe Biden is like the perfect scenario for the deep state is Joe Biden suffers some kind of medical issue. Gavin Newsom runs on st Biden's at a, ra uh, a rally in California and then has, gri grips his chest. And then Gavin Newsom runs out, performs CPR, saves the life of the president. Kamala Harris steps in as acting president, but says she, she does not want to start a campaign this late in the season. She wants to do her duty to this country. Gavin Newsom then says, oh, I will do it, goes on every, I was on the press tour. But what if, what if it's just something crazy like Joe Biden sacrifices himself in some really crazy way, like bringing peace to the Middle East or whatever. He personally goes there and like walks on the battlefield and holds up his hands. And then they're like, no, Joe. And then he goes down in history as like the savior. That's how they get rid of him. I, 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 yeah. But I'd be, I'd be he's, very surprised about that. He's going to yeah. eat an ice cream cone too fast yes. and die of a, uh, I, of a brain freeze. Uh, <laughs> Sniffing yeah. someone's hair by the edge of a mountain and he just falls. Yeah, right now, this side. guy's just a, a prop. I mean, he's a ventriloquist dummy. Yeah. There's nothing there. Also, to yeah, your point, yeah. Phil, to well, what you, I, you saying, know, oh. but but I think it's fair to say more of like, um, I don't know if ventriloquist dummy is the right right phrase because he's also sort of this vacuous pit for money laundering. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's that's true. Maybe, he maybe, has a kind of a money pocket in his um, in his puppetry. Uh, maybe he's a pneumatic banking tube <laughs> where where yeah, the government can put the money and then yeah. send it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Good point. To to what you were saying, Phil, also about the you were mentioning the schools. But also the companies, the corporations yeah. where all of these policies have been enacted and are now enshrined, it's going to take an inordinate amount of time to get that removed from their, what they call mission statements or their yeah. company values, which is, I still laugh, maybe more funny than anything else is the idea that a corporation has like a mission statement or has values. It, but you know, you've got, you've got mid-level, uh, mid-level employees with hiring capabilities that have been indoctrinated with these views.
viewpoints who have been mm -hmm. shoveled this stuff mm -hmm. for the last two decades, you're not just going to have to get rid of them. You're going to have to get rid of the, the people under them. Yeah, the I don't. Under them. I don't think there's a lot of conflict between my point and what Tim says. Yeah. I'm just talking. I'm thinking yeah. that it's just going to take time to actually get this stuff out. It, it didn't happen overnight. No. It happened quickly because of the internet and stuff, but it didn't happen overnight. I don't know if it's that it happened quickly. It's that they they place the chess pieces over a long period of time I agree with that too. and no, then and then the internet just allowed the game to move faster there, there's something else invo involved with wokeness it's, it's not just cultural or ideological it is actually economic and they're actually they've seized upon this as a means for establishing what i call a woke cartel and that is to get rid of businesses by virtue of saying look if you don't get uh, larry fink says larry uh, fink of blackrock if you don't, if you don't live up to this ESG, now he's changed the name of it because yep. it's got such a bad name. Yep. If you don't live up to this ESG, we're not going to invest capital in you. So this is kind of a cartel scheme on top of all the cultural stuff. Yep. Uh, wokeness is kind of like a, a demarcation device to to siphon capital uh, to the right players and mm -hmm. get rid of the rest. True. I think a big component of it was creating division amongst the working class as it pertains to the populist uprising mm -hmm. with Bernie and Trump. Mm -hmm. They they were like, uh-oh, you know, Occupy Wall Street, that's a scary thing. You got a bunch of people complaining about big bank bailouts. What yeah. do we do? Yeah, Make them complain about the race of the other person. And that's what happened. Mm. Mostly the left, right? The right didn't go racist. The right, right, they did no, not. No, but I they think went both Trump. sides took the bait and they fight about it back and forth nonstop. I think everybody ends I, up taking the bait. I, I tried I, to I make I them racist, I think. We are complaining about wokeness <laughs> yeah. because wokeness is a bad thing. The left yeah. took the bait and became woke. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I think it was used I'll, against... I'll, 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 sorry, just real quick. I'll put it yeah, this way. Sure. You, you, you've got two, two guys that are teaming up against, you know, the big fat cat. So the big fat cat throws, you know, like some coyotes into your room. And then all of a sudden you're like, now we have to deal with these coyotes. Mm -hmm. You know, they're a problem. Yes, wokeness is a distraction, but it's not something that we can ignore. Mm -hmm. No, it has to be fought directly. I'm just, yeah. I'm just thinking more like 2020 when George Floyd happens and you have Black Lives Matter and then you have the people saying all lives matter and then they fight about what that means for the next eight months, mm -hmm. right? That's a distraction. But both sides ended up taking the bait because both sides felt like they had a right to have their opinion heard and neither side felt like the bad guy. Except and, that the DOJ made one side the bad yes, guy. Yeah. They made you, you know, they told us that the biggest threat to our country was wh uh, white supremacists and dom as domestic terrorists. And right? a lot of times, like, like to me, uh, I believe a lot of the people who took into this ideology on Facebook who weren't necessarily the most politically inclined, but buy into the slogan, mm -hmm. right? That's why the slogan They're is so effective. Too. Give it a uh, good name, you know, good company. We're, we're the good company. Why would mm -hmm. you not support good company, mm -hmm. right? You buy into that. So the average person who's just working his nine to five job, who just wants to support other people, he doesn't realize that he's being used as a pawn by mm -hmm. these companies exactly. and making it impossible for people to have honest discourse. Yeah. All right, let's go to Super Chats. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and head over to TimCast.com. Click Join Us to become a member and support our work directly. You'll also get access to the Uncensored Members Only Show, which is coming up in about 30 minutes. You don't want to miss it. You as members actually get to call in and talk to us and our guest. But for now, we will read what y'all have to say. Tyler B. says, if you ain't first, you're last. Ooh, those are fighting words. He actually beat I'm Not Your Buddy Guy. I'm not your buddy guy says, I hope people appreciate the gravity of 2024 and the consequences should the left win. Clinton has already teased what they're thinking. Well, World War III. <laughs> mm -hmm. The bonus hole says, if you don't fall, oh, uh, oh, if you don't follow the bonus holes on X, Kathleen Kennedy will crawl out from under your bed and release a rebooted version of the OG <laughs> Star Wars trilogy and she'll replace Vader with a chick and make her gay. Happy <laughs> Halloween. Did you did you watch the Pandaverse? No, is yeah, it good? It's great. I, I loved it. Like, oh, really? I should watch it. It was, uh, they, they end up criticizing Kathleen Kennedy and the people that criticize Kathleen Kennedy, but it's done in a way that's pretty good. Trey Parker and Matt Stone are, are pretty, are pretty good at that still. Yeah. Everyone, everyone gets it. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, I mean, cause sad. Cartman is always the stand in for, be, yep. because Cartman is the anti woke person. Right, He's still the right. stand in for right. that lets you know a little bit of what they think of you, but also what they think of Kathleen Kennedy. But she goes and right. she finds the pander stone in the depths of Disney. Oh, 
Yeah, I saw that clip. Yes, yeah. it's uh, it's and then really it rips open a hole into like a, the multiverse or something. The, yeah, the, the layers part, of irony are wild. There's the uh, they're like the the human brain can't can, can't fathom the the multiverse because the idea they're making fun of how the multiverse is stupid and it's yeah. like right. Randy's it just in the multiverse and all that's happening is his clothes is changing. He's like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm wearing a dolphin's jersey. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm wearing a giant's. Like it's it's really really funny. So it's, very it's good. good. All right, let's grab another one. Waffle Sensei says the DeSantis heels gate, it's boot gate scandal yeah. is the most attention Ron has had in months. It's actually all coordinated to get his name in the press. This is 4D chess, boys and girls. Strut your stuff, little D. The world is watching. Tiny D. <laughs> Maybe he just wants a boot sponsor. Uh, I want to say no. one of the things this boot gate is uh, diverting attention from is the weird fact that DeSantis sends from Florida arms and aid to Israel sent weapons yes <laughs> including wow. citizens weapons who they you know who were given up now whether they are allowed in or not is another question but DeSantis is actually arming israel himself wow so, he's yeah. like if i'm not going to get to be president i'm going to do this before just in case uh, yeah Neo right. Con i'm going to act presidential ne send arms over now and neocon then, you know. ron right neocon ron juan castle says waha tim pool where is your count chocula costume no, nobody's nobody's dressed up. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I'm dressed up. Uh, I'm no. just dressed as me, a thought criminal. Yeah. We had we had multiple like Halloween topics, Tim. Like best I can do. It's Tuesday though. That's the challenge. Like if Halloween's on a weekend, then people yeah, Halloween's you know, past weekend. Yeah, yeah. Everybody. Uh, I saw a lot of people once in Pittsburgh trick or treating on mm -hmm. uh, Saturday. Oh yeah, that was big time that night. Yep. Yeah. So it was like they'll have trick or treating on the weekend or something. Yeah. Not it was, on Tuesday. Uh, I was in Hagerstown and there was like a parade going on. And I was like, oh, this is kind of wholesome. There's all these families out with their kids. That was great until it was like impossible to get out of Hagerstown trying to drive around the parade. All right. Eric Mack says, Tim, are you recording the process of building the coffee show? Because people do like watching that kind of thing. We're not. That actually would be a really... People love that type of stuff. Yeah, like, just like how to build a coffee shop. Well, just like, mm -hmm. yeah, like it, you could even do like weekly updates. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there's people here with cameras. Just simply like go out, grab some B-roll of what's going on, talk to whoever's in charge and get like a two to yeah, three minute yeah. update on what they've done this week and post it on <laughs> TimCast.com. The reason I think that the uh, economy is collapsing and the end is nigh is because of how difficult it is to do simple things. Hmm. Oh, the red tape is insane for everything. Small but it's, but it's, everything. it's not even red tape. It's the inability of contract and companies to function well, yeah, yeah yep. and, and, we, and we've got a bunch of people being like my company people can don't do know it. how to do anything it's not it's not just that it's that the system is completely broken yeah so when we get hit up by companies saying they can do the job mm -hmm. and then it's like eight eight weeks go by and they're like why haven't you started and they're like well we didn't get you know. the permit yet yeah and then uh and then there's some kind of error or problem and then it's delayed again mm -hmm. we we got a frog pond installed and we were like expedited and they're like we'll come out this weekend a month later, it was done. Now, yeah. a pond is a really simple thing. They dig a hole, they line it, and they put rocks around right. it and a filter. And it took a month to do what was supposed to be a weak project. And I'm like, I think the world is collapsing. Yeah, yeah it's pretty bad, man. People can't, you know, we've got a kind of dysfunction in the system because people have been, uh, you know, they've abdicated all these roles to the state. And so they don't know how to do anything anymore. We need to resume taking over. Yeah, our, well, that's the other storyline. And it is uh, the storyline is that all of the handymen in South Park are billionaires now because because of AI, <laughs> nobody so knows how funny. to do anything. Nah. So yeah, all their jobs have been. So that it's talking about taking down the billionaires. And it's just these two handymen who are both just insanely rich because <laughs> nobody knows how to do anything. Is that anymore. The kind of yeah. Oh, we're, yeah. That's it. all right. Bomani says, uh, they find it funny how Tim has armed security, fled to West Virginia, hides on a compound, obscures his address, hasn't not worn his beanie in years. I haven't worn my beanie since I was, I, I, I haven't, I've always worn the beanie. Pro, go back, go back and look at the photos when I was 14 in skateboarding. <laughs> Yet calls his financial supporters cowards. Wait for the cope. When did I call my financial supporters cowards? That, that literally never happened. But I'm more than willing to read your fake criticism. It's amazing what people say. You know, outrageous things that they have no basis for. Just make yeah. that, They just make shit up. That's make shit up constantly. Yeah. But uh, we'll break it down. Uh, armed security. You bet. I also have a bunch of guns myself. Why would I not have security? Do you have people threatening to kill you all the time? Sometimes if you go out into public, Antifa, maybe. But like, do people send bombs and, and bomb threats to your house? So why wouldn't I have uh, armed security? Fled to West Virginia. Why would I want to live in New York or California? Mm -hmm. I went to a place where I could push back the wokeness. Where we are in the panhandle in West Virginia, you've got woke people trying to move in. We're pushing them out. We're going to be building an anti-Times Square 
and helping to uh, secure Americans' values. Excellent. Hides on a compound. I love everyone calls this a compound. It's like <laughs> yeah, that's a right. single it's a, office it's building. It's a building, yeah. It's I mean, I'm not going to give anything else away. Also, yeah. they're like, they're like <laughs> obscuring your address, like, yes. My my <laughs> my 50 acres right, in on, New wait, wait. Hampshire is the compound. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. It's like, it, it, bro, obscures my address. Are you now going to post in the chat your address? Yeah, yeah really. Right, I want you to dox yourself. Yeah, you yeah, right. Yeah, you first. Uh, yeah. And then I, I literally yeah, you're doing a, a lo you're doing localization and you're doing decentralization and you're doing it in real life. This is what we need. It is the weirdest thing, though, how people call this a compound. And it's like it's if not. we if we bought a building in the city, they'd call it an office. But you buy a building <laughs> outside the city and they call it a compound. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, so now that hold makes on. you sound like David Koresh. Yes, that's like exactly that. what I was going to say. It's, it, yeah, <laughs> like the, the, the point is they have uh, the, the, the people who are trying to tear down. Uh, I think I think it's fair. Uh, all's fair in love and war. The left needs to lie because that's the only way they can win. Yeah. So, for instance, Phil is a failed musician, according to Son Piker, mm -hmm. despite having multiple gold records and a platinum record, coming out with new music and like opening awesome. for Metallica, quite literally the the hallmarks of success. Yeah. But they have to lie about it. That's also why he didn't say his name. They claim I don't know how to skateboard. Well, we got a whole bunch of clips. We got a, we got a couple clips I could put up. I just didn't even upload them. Richie, Richie uh, comes in and he's like, hey, Tim, do a switch tray flip. And I'm like, all right, I guess first try, switch yeah. tray flip. No problem. They have to lie. Yeah. It's also a ridiculous criticism that has nothing to do with this here. No. Mm -hmm. the, the, the idea of claiming that Phil is not successful or I'm not successful is because they don't want young people to look up to us. That's what they yeah, fear the most. Actually, that's so that's that's right. the thing. It's a compound. It's like, well, it's a giant mansion with a mini ramp in the basement, a skate park outside, but it's just one big building. Yeah. But uh, however, Free Damistan is fifty acres. That's more I don't, compound. But I, but what does compound mean? <laughs> they just Usually, they just want to pay with corrections. What they're like trying to they're suggest, to yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got arms in here, and you're you're, you're Ruby basically there's, barricaded yeah. behind walls. They're trying to claim it's like, yeah, there's a big fence keeping people yeah, right, out, and everyone right, lives right. here. Like nobody. The know. feds should come after you too. That's the other thing. It oh suggests. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Well, I'll tell you this: the building that we have at Freedomistan is a big, uh, sterile white building, like it, like any other office building. So yeah. there you go. They'll love that. Yeah, they'll, they'll love that. They'll be like, okay, well, it's <laughs> a regular office building, I guess. I like that Tim guy now. He's great. <laughs> all right, what do we got? We'll read some more super chats. CBA Buck says, last night you talked about first aid for mm -hmm. a severed jugular. Look up Scott from Kentucky Ballistics and his injury. Just stick a thumb in it. Yeah. That was that when the, when the cow blew. The, yeah, it blew up and it hit his neck. Is that what he did? He literally stuck his thumb in it, yeah. Oh wow. And that and he lived. He made it. If this dude who got hit in the neck in the UK just went yeah. instead, he just put his hand on it and then Sang just bled it. out in fifty seconds. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy, man. The lion says there is no such thing as Palestine. The region was renamed by the Romans as a slight to the Jews who had been expelled from the region following the BK rebellion. Philistia, Philistines, Palestine. Right. Because the Philistines would be like came from the water or the water people that came on the boats. Yeah. I don't know what this kind of point is. This, 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 this poster is trying to make. I think that's trying to suggest that there's no, there's no historical conflict over the land there. No, no, no. They're arguing that the land belongs to the Jews. Yeah, so, that's, but there's a yeah. It's kind of like saying that there isn't a real historical conflict between the people that live there and the people that got that that live there well, now. Th this was the issue. Uh, uh, one of the issues I had with Max Blumenthal. He said, uh, "I think it was Max. When uh, was it Max? No, it wasn't Max. Um, I think maybe. Yeah, it was Scott. Scott Horton said this uh -huh. that the people who currently live in Israel, the people who have always lived there, they were Jews, but they were conquered by the Muslims and told convert or else, basically. So they did." And then I'm like, so the argument is that a conquered people are being reconquered? <laughs> like I, 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 don't I don't know that history, but I, I, but I, if that's the argument, you're like war is happening again. What, it's like what, oh. what I would defend is the property rights of people that owned houses and things like that. They owned property, and they you know they were you know either scared out of their property or ejected from it. That's for real. When I, I'm sick of the lies, and it's funny because it's yeah, very difficult to get to the bottom of this history. Yeah, but it's the left lying like 90 percent of the time. They could lie, but it's, it's just you know, like it, it's 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 just everything we see. Donald Trump didn't overfeed the koi fish. He did mm -hmm. what Shinzo Abe did. Right. Donald Trump didn't call Nazis very fine people. They right. just lie they about lie, lie. everything. They lie about everything. But sometimes a clock is right twice, <clears throat> twice a day. A broken clock. I mean, right. sometimes they're right, and I don't discriminate about what's true based on who's saying it necessarily. But guess what? Yeah. At any point. When you look at a broken clock, yeah. and you know it's broken, yeah. you check another clock. Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, I'd go for other sources. Absolutely. I would not go with leftist propaganda ever. So let's amend that. They say a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> and Find would, another clock. <laughs> and I would add to that. And yet still, you will always check a working clock a absolutely to verify. True. Absolutely. I would never rely on uh, leftist uh, propaganda for anything. The problem is the average person just doesn't have the time inclination or they're not as involved in this situation it's to understand. And that's, and that's, it's really is what's concerned, like post concern for me. Like everything I read, I have no idea without checking three to four different sources, whether it's true or not. And that just leads a lot of people to disengage. I, I go back to Israeli historians, actually, and look at what they say. These people that did deep research into this. And uh, that's where I get my source from. All right. The Bahamian Rain Man says, I turn 39 tomorrow, and all I want is for y'all to tell me whether or not Trump's voters can legitimately write his name in on the ballot should his name be removed, and whether or not he can still win with these improvised written ballots. No, he can't. If his name is removed, this, then the state has decided they will not honor. They will not honor those votes as Trump is ineligible. So no matter how many votes he gets, they're not going to tally them. They're going to ignore them. And so a lot of people don't get it. If New York removes Trump's name from the ballot, let's just say New York. And uh, how many Republicans they got in New York? Five? <laughs> no, maybe like 10 million? A few upstate. Oh. Yeah. That, right. Yeah. But that's, so let's say California, I think California has 10 million Republicans and 20 million Democrats. Mm -hmm. So although it's always going to be Democrat, that's still 10 million votes to the Republican in the national popular vote. California removes Trump's name from the ballot mm -hmm. and they argue, who cares? It's a blue state anyway. Oh, that's terrible. And the popular vote comes out and Joe Biden's got 80 million and Trump's got 65. And then Trump wins the Electoral College and the left loses it and says, mm -hmm. what? And then we get four more years of we need to get rid of the Electoral and, College. And, and this yeah. will be their excuse, because if Trump wins the Electoral College, but only gets 37 percent of the popular vote, they're going to be like two to one Biden won. How are, are, is our country being ruled by this man without realizing yeah. it's because it took his name off the ballot? Yeah, that's true. And I would say this, even though I hope to be running against Trump directly, I'll say this. This is an outrage. Uh, and what they're doing to him, the legal prosecutions and all this uh, is unbelievable. Uh, it's completely a, uh, a miscarriage of justice entirely, and it should be stopped. Agreed. All right. Daniel Karimian says ditching Hannity for Timcast equals best decision ever. That is correct. Yes, that is a correct statement. I am not a fan of Hannity. I, I, I really not. Tucker, awesome, Hannity, awesome. No, That's, I know Hannity is a is a just a straight down the line neocon no matter right. what. That's I, it. I, I remember that one famous handoff where Tucker was criticizing Amazon for screwing their employees over, and then you know Hannity. It, it does. They, they do the crossover thing. Right. Hannity defends Amazon, and Tucker's like, "Oh, like the <laughs> I mean, they, they, they seem to have been went back then. They were like battling in a, yeah. for a while there. Yeah. Let's grab some more. Donald Dowd says, "I worked at that secret base near the su southern end of Gaza and the Sinai Desert. It's a radar site pointed at Iran and has like five U.S. military at it mm. and a uh, ton of contractors. That's crazy. Mm. Well, there you go. It's, it's not a secret anymore. Yep, yeah, it's out there." Hope that wasn't like a violation of yeah. any kind of like confidentiality. <laughs> well, I mean, we shouldn't have the state keeping all these secrets from us. And uh, I don't know how many 500 million classified documents that we, we aren't allowed to know about. The Emperor's Champion says, why do people act like the CCP, Iran and the Russians are completely innocent and all of this stuff is 110 percent the fault of the U.S.? Well, um, I will say because the U.S. won. But there you go. I don't After. think anybody, I, I certainly didn't mean to be saying that whatsoever. Well, the, the issue is the U.S. wins and then puts a bunch of bases everywhere and mm -hmm. then causes a bunch of problems. Mm -hmm. We then criticize creating those problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Russia's bad. China's bad. Iran is very bad. They're all mm -hmm. very, very yeah, bad. The BRICS are. nations are a big threat. And I'm, I'm really concerned about South Africa. They're, they're, they're probably the worst. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. I mean, <laughs> I just, one of the things that people forget I just, about. When I looked over at Sergeant and said it. Yeah, one of the things people forget about the U.S. is that we control, we basically keep international trade safe with our with our military, military. our military, I meaning our navy, et cetera, our naval power. I don't know if the countries would do that. They haven't indicated that they would do that as well. So I think when, something people forget about. Were, uh, you were you were born in South Africa, right? I was born in Belgium. My parents left South Africa oh, okay. before I was born there. Yeah. And and why did they leave South Africa? 
Uh, well, the obvious reason everyone about knows South Africa in the 80s. You know? <laughs> Some stuff I think you, you could have safe uh, international trade without a military, per se. You could have armed... Hypothetically. Per, or at yeah, least enable people to stop piracy. Private protection thing. firms that would protect property yeah. as it moves through various yeah. regions. Yeah, that would develop over time, but that would there be with the, without that develop, like having the development, it, it's going to take time. It wouldn't just... Yeah, I agree. The, uh, but let's get rid of the state. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. I'm not. I'm, I think a lot of us agree with you, especially on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think uh, I think that people forget how much that uh, that protection it, sure. it gives uh, yeah. so many people, so many nations. It, it yeah, literally protects global trade. It's a hu- it's a huge thing. Yeah. Well, another sure. part of that is a lot, like what Trump used to point out. It's like, like we get a crap deal out of this. We protect everybody. Yeah, totally. And Agreed. we get nothing yep. for Agreed. it, right? So yeah. that's and even that's, a more neutral take yeah. than and that's, yeah, that's really. the thing we should be arguing against. That we we have to yeah. we have to foot the bill. We have to become the police, not just you know we're, we're trying to protect trade. That doesn't mean to be the world police and go yeah, and get involved right. in every conflict and every single war right. that happens. Mm-hmm. It's not just us for which makes us a target as well. Yeah, we're we're not just you know salesmen for Raytheon. The KL Tanker says, I was thinking after you said yesterday about how conservatives just need to have kids, but as a Californian, I have friends that have heavily conservative parents that try to pass down their values and their kids are far left. Okay, mm. this one's really simple. It's because they gave their kids to the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the school's got them. That's yeah. it. The, so it's like, you're, you're conservative. Listen, if you're a conservative and you send your kids to a state-run institution, you're a progressive by traditional standards. The if, go, go back 100 Go back 200 years, go to the founding fathers and have a discussion with Thomas Jefferson about how your kids are going to go to a state run learning facility and you will not see them. And he's going to be like, that's insanity. That's that's well, they didn't have communism. They didn't have a word for it back then. But he'll say, yeah, that's yeah, communism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever word. Yeah, you they mean. put out little status. That's it. It's a status production factor. St- it, yeah, it's a, exactly. It's very hard to get away from that. With the economic standards are with the way they are now with both parents, almost all households are both parents are working yeah. it's very hard it's to very we tough. can do pod learning stuff like that but it's no it's very no. very difficult look look man all of this is a choice okay and for these parents who did not see it coming and thought their kids would be okay i understand they were victimized mm-hmm. that being said now that we know, know these things the answer is yeah. make the difficult decision figure it out and suffer the hardships yeah. for your children that mm-hmm. is to say get out of the cities sell find new jobs and start the process mm-hmm. of look the the, the we, we had colonists who came from europe on boats i say this all the time 20 percent of them died on the ships they landed on shore on barren shores and said this is worth it and mm. they, a lot of them died you don't even got to do that all you got to do is go on craigslist <laughs> yeah, and move look down the move to yeah. a different neighborhood and get start, out of the city start looking up job listings in in uh, maga areas in maga country Find a job and then move. And Unschooling it, and it's is better than going to a, to these state schools. Unschooling altogether. But, but get get out of these yeah. states. Yes. And it is not. Look, all, here, here's here's what I do in skateboarding. What I like to do is I like to imagine a ridiculously hard trick, at, as I'm about to do a somewhat easier version of it. So I try to visualize doing the hardest version. Say, okay, now I pull it back. I do I do a big sail on myself. So imagine. You have to bring your, you have to run, you have to run through fields of landmines with your family to escape a totalitarian regime, <laughs> hell bent on locking up in the gulags, and then stop and say, oh, thank heavens, all I have to do is find a new job and find, and find a house and sell a bunch yeah. of stuff and then move. What do you do about TikTok and social media? Is it just keeping your kids off the phone? Yep. Yeah, it shouldn't be arbitrary. You know, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy mm. actually said that it should be illegal for people eighteen and under go on the internet, uh, uh, go on social media. This is no, uh, no, 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 no. I don't know about that. We don't need. Uh, this. But like, I just, it's going to be very hard because, like you said, you have to keep. It's got about it's about their schooling, where they're living, and also Look, phones, the internet. There's all the ways me, that this information comes. To if them. you if you found out that one of the moms in your neighborhood was hosting sex parties for teenagers in the neighborhood with beer. This is an actual story that just happened. Yeah. Hmm. Would you go, what am I supposed to do? Tell my kid they can't hang out with the other kids? Yeah. Like, this is a normal social thing the kids are doing. <laughs> no, you say, you cannot go to that house. Exactly. So when, when the, the argument that, oh, but like TikTok is what all the kids are doing. It's like, and? Yeah. If all the kids were jumping off a bridge, would you let your kid do it? <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. So what do you do? Move to an area with similar values. Keep your kids away from bad influences because they're absorbing the world around them. And uh, yeah, don't let them use these things for as and long as possible. For as long as possible. Yeah. And it's like it's like when your kid turns eighteen, they get a tattoo, and you say, "Look, 
You're my kid and you live in my house and my rules. When you turn 18, you can go get a tattoo and smoke cigarettes. But right now you live in my house, so no TikTok. And hopefully they won't do it afterwards. By the time they're 18, they'll realize. It's, well, it really is about, you know, these, these like this, uh, these conservative parents had far left kids because they handed their kids over to the far left, to the state. Yeah, now. what I mean is that they would not become far left. Right. Yeah, I don't care about you, the tattoo. <laughs> you need to teach your kids, man. And yeah, it's, you know you know what the, the real challenge is? And I, I don't have kids, but I certainly know this uh, just from my upbringing is it's hard to know if hardship will make or break your kid. Some people sure. are made by hardship. Some people are broken by it. Mm -hmm. But I guess the challenge is you are worse off not having the hardship if someone is going to be broken by a moderate degree of hardship, then they weren't cut out for this and you, and you got to figure something out for them. Yeah. But I think it's better off. I really, I really hate the idea of people like, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure my kids never know the hardship I went through. And I'm like, why? You're successful. Yeah, then you end up with Elon Musk's kid. He's a Marxist, by the human way. Being, <laughs> human beings, like, we're anti-fragile. Like, we need struggle and yeah. resistance. Like, whether it be our biology, when like our bones need gravity or else they become right. brittle and they lose it, mass. It, it, the way that you build your body is by put, is putting resistance on it. Right, right. You have to struggle with things that you don't understand to learn things. Everything about our existence requires some kind of struggle. Is, and that, is, that, is, that is another thing that is ubiquitous across all of human yeah. society. You don't get anything by just sitting there you have to go I, out i agree and there has so you can't like the the helicopter parents and the snowplow parents w who go out and just try to make the world flat for their children are doing their children a massive disservice, disservice. and disservice. our society is suffering now because again we're at the point where we have multiple you know multiple graduating classes a decade two decades yeah. worth of graduating classes where since no child left behind since the bush era where they did stopped failing kids and stopped yeah. having you know trying to get kids to put learn, them in safe spaces just put them, yeah, pass just the fire, get them pet, out. Uh, just put them through the system and let them out. And that's why you have a whole, a whole s this slew of kids that can't read at grade level and stuff. The Good. craziest thing to me. This has been. I thought about this my whole life. I, I watched uh, uh, several educational videos on education. I watched uh, some some great TED talks about schooling and the problems of schooling. And uh, the most important years of a human being's life, zero through five. Mm -hmm where the brain is developing and absorbing everything around it. And what does the average American do with their kids? They sit them down, put them, put them, on, iPads. Put put them on an iPad yeah. and have them do nothing. Right. Before iPads, it was nothing. Yes, yeah, I guess TV. TV. TV? TV. Yeah. That, that's crazy. PBS. Yeah. For all of human history, these kids were with their parents all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Learning so, from adults. And yeah. so we <laughs> see that viral video where you've got a bunch of 10 year olds talking about the war and it's like black and white and they sound like adults and everyone's like, why do the kids sound like this? Because they were raised by adults. Yeah. Exactly. Because their influence was adults. So they they acted like adults. Yes, they need to be outside by themselves, playing with each other. And, you know, I mean. No, we, no, 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 no. That's the opposite. Kids need to be raised by their parents. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but what I'm getting at is here, they need to have some independence. They don't need helicopter parents, which are completely right. crippling them. Yeah. The yeah. issue right now is that kids are being raised by each other. Exactly. Yeah. So. We're being raised by social media. We're the state. Well, yeah. But Mostly see, but, the state. Yes, but schools. At least when I was in school, we had no respect for teachers. Anything a teacher said was meaningless garbage. Yeah. And we made fun of anybody who agreed with the teacher. So the kids <laughs> had, were raising each other. Yeah. They were. I get it. Yep. You have to fit in with the other kids instead of fitting in with the adults. Sure. I was working for my fa my family's business. And so I was surrounded by adults on the weekends, at least. And so I'm like, okay, that's the behavior they're engaging in. And how do I, you know, how do I, am I supposed to behave in things like this? Then the kids are all just doing fart jokes. And they grew up and they did the same thing. Yeah, much. There's a viral photo. Uh, someone had a tweet and they said, 40 years old, married with kids, living in the suburbs, or this. And it's a mattress on the floor oh, yeah, with a I pile of laundry. That. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, because that person never grew up. Mm -hmm. Because that person was raised by children. Yeah. And it is, I mean, it, it, it look, I, I feel for parents who didn't see this coming and didn't know, you know, but at a certain point. You have the responsibility to solve the problems and to and to and to to, to uh, see the pitfalls and the dangers that will befall your family. And if you were like, I got an idea. I'm going to give my kids to the state for eight hours a day and have no idea what, what they're being told or what's happening. What do you get? You get kids being bullied, kids killing themselves. Mm -hmm. You get uh, school shootings. You get Marxism and cultural uh, uh, cultural uh, 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 cultural Marxism. Mm -hmm. 
critical race theory mm -hmm. because parents were just like genderism ideology gender ideology yeah, because gender parents ideology. were just like it, it is they abdicated their responsibility there, early. there's a video where a guy asks dads about their kids and he's like what's your what's your daughter's birthday and they don't know what's your daughter's teacher's name no idea yep. i'm like they look i'm sorry if you don't know the name of your kid's teacher you don't care yep and, I, and, and i'm not saying there's a slight that is not meant to be like i'm insulting you like how dare you not care no i'm saying like you literally don't care right yeah like i don't know the name of the guy who fixes the septic tank here why well i don't care what his name is yeah I don't, I don't i don't handle that someone else calls and like has that maintained so i don't care yeah mm -hmm. if you don't think about your teacher that, that your kid's teacher you don't care maybe you should care that's all perhaps all right ian crossland says i'm <laughs> coming for you tomorrow tim pool oh no <laughs> well he's mad because i said if he's not back by wednesday we're taking that ian crossland down we're, we're, gonna, take it down. we're gonna put up a phil labonte one we actually don't have one we gotta we, we gotta hit up the company that made these because these are really awesome. Yeah. yeah, we got we actually have a Timcast IRL one laying down over there. It's uh, over here. Oh, it's over there. Yeah, it's over here. Yeah, well, we, I gotta say this studio is way bigger than it looks on on air. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, the Timcast IRL one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We framed the go. Timcast right. one, and so we never put the Timcast IRL one up, but we probably should. But we should probably get a bunch of those. I just noticed awesome. a beanie on that one. I just see That's a lot cool. of guns on that one. Here. That's and awesome. Pump. This is a really yeah, good Yeah, here's... here's <laughs> 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 so good. Quality. Yeah, yeah, Ian has a UFO on it. That's, yeah. yeah. yeah a little, little top. That's and great. then uh, what did Luke's have? Luke's oh, is in there. Oh, I don't remember. I think it has his his logo, actually. And Lydia's had something. Yeah, it has a weird change logo, too. yeah. Yeah, well, Luke's has his own logo. Shimcast. <laughs> but it's fine. Seamus abandoned us, so you know we don't we don't care about him anymore. Anyway, so, you know, whatever. Eddie Kazada, Kazada says, I'm looking for a gang expert to give expert testimony in Owasso, Oklahoma. My father unalived his daughter's traffickers who tried to take her. The police are treating traffickers like the victims. Just a simple website mm -hmm. site will have the info. Wow. Yeah, that's what's going on. I, it's called anarcho tyranny. They're letting yep. criminality yeah, run completely rampant. 100%. And uh, you can't even defend yourself against criminals. It is not duty, duty strictly what libertarians have always talked about as over-policing. What we're seeing here is instead a terrorizing of people by criminality. All right, everybody, if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button? Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. Go to TimCast.com right now. Click join us. You know the drill. We're going to have that uncensored show up in a couple minutes where we hang out with you live and take questions from the audience. It's going to be a lot of fun and not so family friendly. So again, click join us over at TimCast.com. You can follow the show at TimCastIRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast, basically everywhere. Uh, Michael, do you want to shout anything out? Yes, please. Uh, WreckTheRegime.com. That's R-E-C, the regime.com. And follow me on X or Twitter at WreckTheRegime. Let's right do it. Oh, hey, guys. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasivic on both of those platforms. And please go ahead and check out Pop Culture Crisis Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. You should come hang out with us. I am Phil That Remains on Twix. I am Phil That Remains official on Instagram. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Pandora, you know, the Internet. And I'm Surge.com, enjoying being South African and the world champs in rugby, having the Web Ellis once more today. Uh, you can find me on the internet on Twix at Surge.com. I'm on, uh, what's it called, uh, Truth Social now, which would be sweet, I guess. <laughs> did, did South Africa win the World Cup or something? Yeah, we beat the All Blacks. We are the winningest country four times. Uh, we're also back-to-back. -back. No big deal, guys. Wait, like, uh, this, this is like the big game. This yeah, is this is the Web Ellis. This is the Rugby World Cup. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's, wow, why, I'm, yeah. that's why I'm so excited. So, uh yeah, Boca Boca forever, guys. All right. We'll see you all over at TimCast.com in a couple of minutes. Thanks for hanging out.